You are listening to SoFloRadio.com. <laughs> Say, Jim. Oh, uh, it's the champagne. It's time for the Owen Frank Noodle Show. Rolling. You can reach the show, 954-990-0036. You can reach the show on Twitter, at O and Noodle Show, or at Half Moon 20. It's time for the Owen Frank Noodle Show on SoFloRadio.com. You know everything, Taylor. Don't rush to the bar, fool, if you ain't got no paper. That's the rules. High folks, sloppy drunk when I'm passing through. Rolling doobies up, yo, who we pass them to? Hit the club, spend this money up, roll another one, drink, act a fool. So I spent most of my day today texting with about 18 different people back and forth about the dumbest thing all day today. And I know we have a lot of sports to talk about and there's things out there like LeBron James and the whole thing with Manziel and Hoyer and the Dolphins actually look pretty good for about four minutes on Friday night or Saturday night whenever they played and there's a lot to talk about but I want to talk about how I spent almost 60% of my day today trying to figure out the two drafts that I'm in in fantasy football and how sad it is that you're trying to hook up with your friends really is what you're trying to do and everybody's so busy including myself that it's impossible to set a date and a time yeah to draft your fantasy football team agreed I mean that's that's absolutely crazy I'm in two leagues, and both leagues, nobody can pick a date. Everybody's on a mission. No one can pick a time. And I'm the first one. Like, I can't draft on almost three nights out of the week. Nobody can do Sundays. Everybody's on a mission. You're in one of the leagues. We can't even decide on what day it is. People want to do it in someone's house. People want to do it at a strip club. People want to do it at Hooters. I mean, is this the same thing for you, Frank? Or, like, what's going on here? Like, am I, am I the only one on this mission? Nah, it's just we're older now, you know. It's not like before. Let's go draft, and you could do it an hour later. Now you got you got wives, you got kids, you got jobs, you got all kinds of stuff going on, and it just it just makes it um, it makes it pretty bad. It's funny that you bring the, the the draft up. I was talking to to one of our friends the other day, and we were talking about uh, remember Hurricane Andrew, the fantasy draft of Hurricane Hurricane Andrew. Yes, we had it at at, at, at Tony's house. Exactly. Well. Let me say the story for people out there that uh that don't know the story. We're uh, okay. So when we draft, we basically turn off all our phones. We're not allowed to communicate with uh, general population. We're zoned in for about four or five hours. So we decided. I believe this was like around 2007. Yeah, but ex- explain why we don't allow phones because we have people in our league that they'll call their buddies, like phone a friend exactly. for a pick, and we're not done with that. Either yeah. you come prepared or you don't. Exactly. Go ahead. So um, this is around 2007, I think, or 2006, when uh, Andrew passed by here. I'm, I'm sorry, it was not Hurricane Andrew. It was Katrina. It was Katrina. Like it was Yo, hold on. I was going to say, bro, Hurricane Andrew was like yeah, in fourth yeah. grade, man. Sorry, my bad, my bad. <laughs> my bad on the name there. All right, It was Hurricane Katrina before she hit New Orleans. So we're drafting in the draft. Um, all phones are off. Uh, the lights go out, and then we start drafting with a candle. And we <laughs> start drafting with a candle for about two hours so when the draft is finally over we start turning on our phones and we start turning on our phones and we start looking outside first we see outside there's like palm trees inside one of our boys we're at his house there's palm trees inside the pool the car outside is like smashed and there's wives calling phones all over the place leaving messages two people have died what are you guys doing and we're like idiots we're inside a house with our friend's mom stuck in there we can't leave there's 10 idiots inside a house drafting wives calling and we're stuck with my friend's mom in his house and we can't leave the house uh wives are crying girlfriends are crying oh my god we're gonna die you idiots are there drafting so some of us had to leave i had to drive in the middle of this hurricane i remember going by coral way and like 107th and seeing two cars flipped over with poles broken in half and i was like oh my god we're a bunch of idiots. We're there drafting, and there's a hurricane going on outside, and we're laughing about it. So I thought it was a pretty good story to tell in the air right now. It was actually – well, I remember that day when I got in my car, I had to drive home, and Tony's like, bro, you guys can stay here or whatever. And I think Flea was, like, really concerned about driving home 
And I was like, nah, I'm going to drive home. And I, I was super hyped. And I got in my car and I got on Miller. And I was like, oh, this is a problem. There was nobody out there. None of the lights worked. It was a disaster. And I drove by like two cops, and I think one of them looked at me and just like flicked his lights at me. Like, like what are you we, doing? What are you doing driving in the street? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I was the only one in the street. I had an expedition at that time, so the wind and the rain was like swerving me back and forth. It was pretty insane. So, but I had a good draft, by the way. So, yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll go with that. But yeah, yeah, like, I mean, we're gonna get into sports, but definitely my day today has been all day with this ridiculous nonsense. And I think we decided in one league a day, but the other league I haven't decided a day and. I mean, I'm a, I'm I'm also on a mission with you know what a variety of things I'm doing in my life. So, yeah. But that's that. So, so enough with the fantasy football talk. I did have a draft yesterday, kind of like a mock draft that I do. Right. With a couple of friends there for my job, so I was I was excited with my team. It's only eight teams, so everybody's kind of stacked. Yeah. So it comes down to who gets hurt and who doesn't. But nice. I was kind of happy with with where I ended up getting some players. And who'd and you get for your first pick? Uh, Jamal Charles. Oh, nice. That's that's the keeper in my league. I, yeah, I'm keeping Jamal that Charles guy. And I had I got him with a fourth pick. Uh, we had a, a guy that actually is really good at drafting. Took Payne Manning with a third. Right. And I took Charles with four. And no, nah, I have a pretty stacked team. Mm-hmm. It's but again, it's it's eight players, so it's 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 gonna happen. So very we'll see nice. How that works. So wh- what do you think about the the Tony Stewart accident yesterday? You don't want to know what I think about Tony Stewart. Because, Why not? Because you disagree with me. Okay, but so we're not gonna talk about just it. because we disagree doesn't mean we can't talk about it. I don't have to agree with everything you say. Nah, but That's why we have a radio show here. No, nah, but you 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 disagree and we're so not gonna talk about it. Omar's really mad because we disagree about the Tony Stewart. No, thing. I'm not. I'm not upset. What I'm upset about is that someone has died and you think it's cool. I don't think it's cool. No, no. Listen, no. don't put words in my mouth. No, that's not you, what I'm saying. You said it's no, okay no, listen, for the kid no, to be no, killed because no, no. he got out of the car. No, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. Okay, well, pr- say what you want to say and then we'll move on to uh, Manzel and Hoyer. L- let's play it like this. Let's. Say that you're the attorney, all right. Let's say that you're the attorney for the kid that I got out of the car, which his name is uh, what's his name? James Edward James or something like that. Okay, and I am the attorney for Tony Stewart. All right, you're the plaintiff because you're accusing me that I killed your guy, right? So what is your what what's your what's your accusation? What do you what do you stand on right now? Again. This is something that I think a lot of right. people are misjudging what actually happened. Okay. And people are just claiming that because this gentleman um Right, came but tell out of the tell car. me tell me why you believe that Tony Stewart did this intentionally. Show me proof. I, not, I don't not, don't again, just show me a resume. Again, again. Because that's what you're going on. Let's let's clear this. Let's right. clear this real quickly. I don't think at all that Tony Stewart did it intentionally. That's where you've been miss you've missed the boat. Okay, on so this. That, tell me your point. There is no point at this point. You have your opinion. I have mine, and we'll move on. Well, tell me your opinion. Sir. I don't. Tell- I don't have one. Okay, let me tell you my opinion. Go ahead. Okay, I think that for people out there that are just recklessly accusing Tony Stewart of running this kid over, are being completely irresponsible. And I'll give you my points why. Um, even though, let's say they find out that for some reason they think that he might have done something wrong. There's four factors that I see that there's no way possible that you can accuse Tony Stewart of anything wrong. Number one, one of the first things that you're taught as a human being by your parents when you're a kid is not to run onto the street. Okay? This guy got out in a in the middle of a race, all right, on a track, all right, and then taunted a driver. Almost got hit by one, but got hit by the second one. Number two, this race was at nighttime. All right, and he was wearing a black suit. Okay. Number three, he hit him on a curve. It wasn't on a straightaway. If he would have hit him on a straightaway, all right, I would have had more. Uh, I would have leaned more to what you're thinking is. And number four is he didn't hit him straight on. He hit him from the side with his tire. So leads me to believe that this was a mistake, and. If he did it on purpose, the only person that's going to know this is Tony Stewart inside his vehicle. No one else is going to know what happened there. Now that there's rules in NASCAR and all these things that you might know more because you you follow the sport. I'm not saying I follow the sport because I don't. All right. I followed for like the last three days and I've heard experts talk about it and everything that's gone on. But this guy pretty much. Just by him getting out of the car and taunting somebody, which I heard is accepted in the sport, which is absolutely ridiculous. I don't know how NASCAR has not stepped in 
and made this a rule where you, if you get out of your car and you taunt somebody in the middle of a race, you are gone for two years or a year because you're putting your life in danger and you're being an idiot about it. All right, and this kid is gone, and it's a shame that he has died. All right, but what he did was one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in sports. How do you get out of a car and taunt a guy and point him in his face? Like, who does that? I mean, it's like a 20-year-old filled with testosterone is the only person that would be able to do that because that is just – it was just dumb. It's a dumb thing. So that's that's my take on it. Frank, the producer, you have anything to add to that? Well, going back to the kid going out and calling Tony Stewart, that's something that I guess he's seen other racers do because Tony Stewart's been seen that he's throwing his helmet at officials, he's throwing his helmet at other drivers, and every time there's a wreck in, a, let's say, NASCAR, you always see drivers walk up to the other person or to the other car, even as they're driving by, and tell them the, give them a piece of their mind. Okay. That's just the whole road rage behind it. Now, do you cross, I, if your car breaks down on I-95, I just got into a car accident two weeks ago, okay, mm -hmm. so I was stuck in the middle of I-95. When you're on I-95 and you're in the street, you have to have your eyes open at all times because in the back of your mind you're saying, bro, I can get hit by a car and I can die. So this kid kind of took it as no, nothing's going to happen. I'm invisible. In the, yeah, he stood in front of the car and taunted him. Yeah, there's a caution flag, so yeah. everybody has to slow down for me, so I'm going to stand here and do whatever I want. So he's at fault. We don't know what Tony St uh, Tony Stewart was thinking, so you kind you can't give him the fault. A lot of people are saying he revved them purpose. Right. You don't you, know what you, he's thinking. You though. don't know that. Right. You can't put the only thing that you have on Tony Stewart right now. All right. If new evidence comes out, then we could start judging in that. We in, need to in, see the audio. Right. Car, we need if we have which more. Is very ironic. Right. That they don't have the audio. Well, Correct. supposedly there was a GoPro camera connected to right. the car. If but we, the, but they don't have footage right. of it. If we get more evidence. Following this, mm -hmm. then we could do something else. Look, this is. But right I, now, right I'm now, the you. only. Hold on, I'm going to finish right now and then I'll, you can go ahead. <clears throat> the only thing that we have right now on Tony Stewart is his resume. A horrible resume right now. From what I hear, he's a really angry driver. Mm -hmm. All right. And he has a past of these, of this kind of behavior. Not a behavior of killing somebody, but he's a very aggressive driver. He's gone through anger management. Right. And he doesn't have a family either, which I heard. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Racing is his thing. It's his only thing. So he puts all his energy into this. So, Omar, I'd like to hear your point on it. Well, my point is irrelevant because it's – it's. I see it totally different than how you guys see it because it's – this is, my, this is my, my honest opinion. You have a guy who's a professional driver. This is what he does for his life. Okay. Okay? There are certain standards in NASCAR that I believe are in place for certain reasons. Number one – the fact that Kevin Ward got out of the vehicle and puts himself in danger is not the smartest thing to do in the world, okay? I probably wouldn't get out of the car, but obviously I'm not Kevin Ward or Kozlowski or Kyle Busch or any of these guys that are driving these cars and they get into accidents and it happens all the time, okay? Now, me, I probably went out of the car, but again, I'm not put in that position, so I don't know. What I do know is that Tony Stewart and Kevin Ward had an accident on the track. They are the ones who collided, okay? So it wasn't like Stewart didn't know that there was an accident on the track. He actually caused it by squeezing him in corner on, on turn one. Once he squeezes him, he notices he bumps him. He feels the bump. There's a spin out, etc. cetera. There are spotters on these tracks. These spotters advise you of where the accident happened. A yellow comes out. The radio tells you yellow, yellow, yellow. Slow down. Stay low on the track, etc. These are all things that are communicated to all the drivers on the track, including Tony Stewart, okay? If you watch the video, now, before I go on to my next topic, I'm going to go out and unlimit. I'm going to say I don't think Tony Stewart is a type of person to hit a person and run them over and kill them. But I do think that he has enough of a reputation and enough of an attitude that when a cocky 20-year-old kid gets out of his car and wants to mock Tony Stewart, that Tony Stewart might be like, hmm, maybe let me fishtail this kid and throw some dirt on him for acting like a clown and accidentally he hit him because if you look at all the cars that drove by and i believe there was 10 of them that drove by turn one on that night nine of them are idle not one hits the gas pedal not one cars are neutral they're idle they're staying low on the track one car almost hits kevin ward which i found a little crazy that he was actually that high on the track and here comes Tony Stewart, middle high side of the track, revs his engine, and hits this kid. 
Now, granted, kids in the middle of the track, black suit, black helmet. I understand. It's nighttime. These tracks don't have the lighting that these other tracks have, like in Homestead or in Daytona. They have Moscow lighting. It's almost brighter than it is during the daytime. Okay? My point is this. Tony Stewart is a veteran driver, and he used bad judgment. Regardless, he knows better than to stay on the low side of the track and get out of the way. If you tell me it's another rookie driver that don't know what they're doing, we're talking about a guy who's won NASCAR championships. We're not talking about a clown, okay? We're talking about a guy who's respected in the sport. That happens to be my favorite driver. So when I sit here today and tell you that I think what he did is a mistake and it could have been handled different, I'm not saying it because I don't like Tony Stewart. I'm not saying it because I hate Tony Stewart. I'm saying it because that's the reality. Okay, and we talk about how ESPN covers everything up and you're the first one to tell me that you don't like ESPN because they cover everything up and you're playing the role of ESPN. No, I'm not. I'm telling you uh, what. No, because nobody's come out. ESPN to draw stories right now will accuse Tony Stewart of being a murderer, which is what they did Saturday morning when I was listening to the radio. Okay, when I was listening to the radio Sunday morning, when I heard Mike Lupica show and Ian Gorshman or whatever the guy's name is. All right, they were making it sound like he did it on purpose. And the first thing I did is text a friend of mine who works over at ESPN, and I'm like, I hope ESPN is more responsible with the way they cover the story and not accuse this guy of being a murderer just to blow up the story and make it and, and make it a, a huge thing because no one knows that, okay? You cannot say that right now. Even the police has come out. The chief of police said it would come out and said this is a track incident right now. Mm-hmm. This is not. No, they. They. I just this read is a, it. This is a track incident. They're, they're, they're still. They're still investigating okay, it. Okay, it's a track as incident. A, as a potential, as a potential, inve- there's an investigation. Okay. That there could be. No, they haven't said anything about could be. I will show it to you right here on my iPad. They haven't said anything. I'll show it to you no. right here on my iPad. Okay, somebody wrote that wrong because the guy no, has come no. out twice already and said that. No. Okay. And the reason why there's an investigation is because there's a death. And this is and this there is why is a death and there's here. been many times okay. that there've been accidents on tracks with death. Okay. Okay. But and a police investigation that could cause that they're looking for potentially intent mm-hmm. has never happened. Right. Okay. Now, now don't get me don't get me twisted here. Maybe Tony Stewart's reputation has led for the police to look at this a little deeper. And see if there was an issue off the track between him and this kid before in the right. past, or if there was confrontation on 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 in the pit box in the pit area, or etc. Which we don't know of. My question is this: If the police is investig is in, is doesn't think anything's happening, why do they continue to investigate? Why? Because there's I, a death, Omar. Why haven't they not closed it yet? Because there's a death. But if you think it's an accident, it's an accident. Move on. Th- there's no. That's not the way investigation so goes. So what are you, they you're, investigating? You're, you're, the death of this gentleman. What are they investigating? The death. They're going over the details. He's dead. Okay. It was an accident. But What's that, to investigate? The death of this guy. He's dead. Okay. It was an accident. Because of someone else. What? But what are they investigating? Omar, they're investigating to see if it was an accident or he 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 purposely killed him or not. Thank you. Okay, but and that's, and but that's, I haven't... I, have and I, that's, and that's all right. exactly... And but that's I'm, exactly. Let me finish. But you Th- coming to the conclusion that he did is irresponsible. I never, I never on your said ass. that he did. Yes, never, you, but I, listen. So then, what's your point? What I'm saying to you mm-hmm. is, that again, this is why I don't want to have this talk with you because you're not listening. Okay. Go what ahead. I'm saying is that Tony Stewart, mm-hmm. as a veteran driver, should have known better. I think he put himself in a position. But known better of what? To what's, stay what? low on the track okay. and away from where the accident how do you, was. How do you know if his helmet didn't get caught somewhere or? He, there was a fly in the car. He was scratching his ass. in the car, yeah, scratching was, you his You don't ass. know. All these things happen in All life. Right. All these things happen right. in life. He got a misreading from somebody. All these things happen. The right. only person that knows this, all right, is Tony Stewart. Mm-hmm. And if we get another video that he hits the throttle, then you have a different case and a different story. But as of right now, what we've seen has come out. You cannot pin anything on him. Nothing. Look, Correct. I'm watching this video now for like a couple times now. Two things that I see. One, the car before, a couple cars before Tony Stewart drove by, they were all riding high on the track. So it's right. not like there's a there's an obvious caution flag out there that everybody was going. This kid ran directly into the path of Tony Stewart. Now, the thing that yes. kills Tony Stewart on the video 
was that as soon as the body was hit, it looked like he had swerved to the right. We don't know if there's a throttle was was stepped on listen, even harder or anything like that. If you listen like to that. the audio, you listen, you hear him hit the throttle, and those cars will fish tape. But how can you tell that's that car uh, raising the throttle when there's 12 cars on the track? You, you can going tell it straight. Listen to the audio. When we go on break, you listen to the audio. Okay. okay. There was another car that almost hit him. If you see the video, correct. It was a blue and white car. All right. the other cars were low on the track. I mean, you listen to the Owen Frag Noodle Show on SoFloRadio.com. You are listening to SoFloRadio.com. Here's the latest ratings you asked for. What is this? Where did all our listeners go? Um, SoFloRadio.com. SoFlo, what channel is that on? It's online, sir. It's Wi-Fi radio. Oh, I see. But what channel is it on? Put your business on the leading edge of media advertising with the SoFloRadio.com network. Unlike antiquated AM or FM radio, your professionally produced 30 or 60 second ad will be heard live on SoFloRadio.com during the day and will be downloaded thousands of times a day on SoFloRadio.com as well as being heard on our free podcasts on iTunes. Wi-Fi radio and Bluetooth are now available with BMW, Ford, GM cars and trucks. Don't get left behind. Contact SoFloRadio.com for details and our very affordable rates soflowradio.com stay ahead of the game the amigo show with larry million yeah i said it michael jordan was the biggest thing in the nba lebron is the biggest thing in the nba same type of star i'm not gonna argue who's better today and you look at that right frank and i remember jordan like i rooted against jordan you know why i rooted against jordan Whoa. <laughs> oh my, <God>. my, <laughs> my voice went soprano. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. What I meant to say was <laughs> What I meant to say was when I Do you know why I root against <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> the Amigo Show, Saturday mornings from 9 to noon, only on SoFloRadio.com. The Owen Frank Noodle Show. The park was a disaster. Oh, you've been there, the Gatorade? Gatorade. I was like, what? Yeah, that's Gatorade, way, that's that's Gatorade, Gatorade in Spanish. Gatorade. Yeah. Gatorade. Gatorade. <laughs> I ordered a Gatorade once, and he goes, Chico, do you got a Gatorade? I'm like... What? <laughs> Look at Franco. What is he talking about? Gatorade. Uh, Gatorade, homie. <laughs> I was like, what? Little Havana living, baby. That was wow. awesome. The Owen Frank Noodle Show. Tuesday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. Only on SoFloRadio.com. You are tuned in to the Owen Frank Noodle Show. Richard? Is this your coat? <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> that guy in a little coat. That guy in a little coat. Don't. <laughs> that guy in a little coat. That guy in a little coat. On SoFlowRadio.com. Richard, what's happening? Hello? All right, what a bad one. I guess the audio didn't play. No right. problem. No music is good music. We can sing for you if you want. No, no acapella, please. La, At least la, not la, from la. me. All right. So. I got some gas right now. I could, you know. Oh, never mind. Bad joke. <laughs> all right, all right. There it is. Yeah. Oh, that's all. All right. But I do know that some of the biggest retail stores is going so we've agreed to disagree with Tony Stewart. I guess it remains to be seen. Everybody has their opinion. It's the obvious point. Frank has a point. Go ahead. Look, the only thing, the only thing that we can take away from this right now, if um, I mean if it continues to go the way it's going to go, which I think nothing's going to happen to Tony Stewart, is that NASCAR has to implement a rule about this. This is. As much as this is part of the culture where you get out of your car, it's just like hitting a batter. You know what I'm saying? They're going to they're gonna stop doing that in baseball until somebody gets killed 
with a baseball, all right, which is what happened to this kid here on this track. You can't get out of your car. It's just as accepted as that is in that culture, that is the stupidest thing right now in sports. How is that accepted? So you need to make a rule on this. Like if you get out of your car, you're suspended for a year, you're suspended for life, two years, something crazy where it protects the driver from, I mean, everyone here has had road rage. Frank, you've had road rage. <laughs> you Omar, you you've had road that. rage. I mean, I got into it with this fat girl the other day down by the beach. I ended up all the way almost at the end of Broward County. All right? I hit her with a quarter, and then I went to work afterwards. I felt better afterwards, but, I mean, I think ba about it now, and I lost almost 45 minutes of the day chasing this dumbass all the way to Broward just to hit her with a quarter because she had cut me off in Miami. You know what I'm saying? Almost in Miami Beach. You throw a quarter at her? I threw I threw quarters at her. <laughs> all right? I got in front of her, and it was a load of quarters. I just loaded on her ass. And she threw a can of Coke back at me. We screamed at each other for a while, but I felt better after I hit her car with the quarters. So... I mean, there has to be something to protect these drivers at some point getting out of their car and, and hurting them. That's that's the only good thing that can come out of this. And maybe you can name the rule after the kid that he did actually something good for the sport. This is, this goes along the case like right. as a kid, you're watching the professionals do it. And you're like, oh, they do that all the time. So right. when I get hit, I'm going to go after him. And yeah. I think he got too into it because usually when you see NASCAR drivers do it, they do it from the side, the side, from, line, the side. Right? from near their cars. So they say whatever they have to say, right. and then later on they deal with it if they want to deal with it. Correct. We've seen we've seen push fights all the time after the whole race is done because they're not finished saying whatever they have to say. This kid just got way too into it. Yeah, I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna say he had the blame, and I'm not gonna say Tony Stewart had the blame. They're both at fault because I just saw the video now, and yeah, okay, I understand. You hear the revving. He may have done it to intimidate him, but Tony Stewart's in a position that he can't even say that to police right now because if he does say he was trying to intimidate him, he's still going to be hit with ve uh, the, vehicle or homicide, whatever yeah, it's called. They'll charge him with, with, with homicide. Yeah. So and he's not look. Nothing's gonna happen. That's that's not that's not what we're discussing here, and that we're not we're not in the position to make that that determination. Nothing's gonna happen. Tony Stewart's gonna continue to drive NASCAR cars, and he's gonna continue to live his life. He'll make an apology and it's end the story. Okay. All I'm saying is that. Being someone that, that kind of knows the business a little bit about NASCAR, which ironically, it's crazy, but I do. I just think he should have stayed a little bit, you know, on the low side of the track and stayed away from it. Maybe his ego and his cockiness and his attitude got the best of him and put him in a bad position. Who knows? But we'll never know. But this whole thing that there was a fly in the car or whatever, I don't want to hear that. Bro, that's, that's why I was saying this is something that kids looking up to hey, stuff uh, professional happens. athletes. Yeah. Because look, in baseball, when you play peewee baseball, we know in the pros that, that you can truck the catcher, not anymore, but you know, back in the day you can truck the catcher and then if you're upset about somebody, you know, you beam them. In Little League, you're not taught that. You can't, cr you can't ram into the catcher because then you're called automatically out. So this has to be passed down. That's why it's a good idea what Frank said. You have to start issuing suspensions to this because it's not good for kids to go up and grow up with this sport and say, all right, if somebody clips me and I'm mad, I'm going to go and try to try them in the middle of the track. Right. Well, I don't really – yeah, I mean, they'll put a rule in it now, I guess. But, I mean, because Lowski said that he's like, I'm getting out of the car no matter what. You know, if I feel like getting out of the car has been part of the sport, I think he's a dumbass for saying that. Right. But whatever it is, what it is. Not my problem. I feel I feel bad for Kevin Ward and his family. Uh, it's a tragic situation, and I really don't care to talk about it, to be honest with you. It's, it's a moot point. Let the police handle it. There's still an investigation, and they'll figure it out. All right. So, uh, <laughs> I think we made Omar legitimately upset because no, I've never no, seen him like this. He's been mad at me all day because I, I don't agree with him, and I'm, like, I'm not, not, not going to agree with you. It's my opinion. Yeah. It's my opinion. No, That's you, just you my think that because you got out of the car, it's okay to get smashed. No, I don't think it's out of the car. But I think that even I think you took it too far. No, that's not what I said. The kid, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that's not what, what you I said. Okay, look, that's not what I said. Okay, look. Let's say right now that even that we find out that Tony Stewart was trying to scare him. Okay, let's say that we know that for a fact right now. Let's play hypothetical right now. Okay, who's more at fault? The kid who got out of the car. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Or Tony Stewart. For trying to scare him. Who, who's more at fault? The kid is. I he just still think it's more fault of the kid. Well, that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying was taking it too far. Not Tony Stewart. I think the kid took it too far because he got too close. Right. You still have to blame him more for what happened. I think Agreed. they both have the blame, but more blame falls on him for getting out of the car and being a total idiot. And it's a shame that he died. He didn't He didn't live long to learn his lesson, but I think it's, it's, it's just stupid. 
stupid to get out of the car and do that. Now, nice. answer me what I asked you in the break. Is Are we making this a big deal because it's Tony Stewart and it's his oh, track record? It's, if it was any other racer on the track, would, we have been, would it mean, have been as big of a story? Frank, that's a given. It's Tony Stewart. He's one of the biggest racers in NASCAR. Of course it's a bigger story because of Tony Stewart. So that's all you're seeing on ESPN. All they're right. playing is all his videos of and him throwing it's helmets Tony, at cars. It's Tony Stewart. Yeah, do you see, that? This, is, this is what gets me upset about ESPN. Things like that. Yeah, they're they, trolling. They're not... They're not responsible when they cover stories. They just aren't, and they're taking the angle now. Oh, look, you know, look, look, look at Tony Stewart. Look at, look at how bad he is. Like, let you know, what I'm saying, be journalist. You know, cover the story correctly. Cover the facts. Don't cover speculation. Don't cover, don't cover what happens, what happened ten years ago. No, no, cover the facts of the story because every and accidents happen. I mean, it's just the saying goes, shit happens. Sometimes it just does. It was no one's fault, and things happen sometimes. They just do, you know. I've had, I've I've had my girlfriends leave an iron on the bed, and I burned my ass, and I have a mark on my ass because of it. it w- did she mean to do that? No, but did I mean to sit down? No, it happens. It just happens sometimes. So, you know, it's it's a tragic story, but um, it, it's definitely uh, uh an interesting discussion. So, what were we saying about fantasy? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Omar doesn't want to talk. No, I, I just this is why I told you not to bring it up because I just don't really. Right. You're I, you're I, li- you're. Why are you upset that we don't agree on something? I don't understand. No, no, because I I just I just don't think that you see it. I don't know. It's just that I, I we can believe, agree. We can disagree. This believe, is why we have a radio show. I can't show. believe you see it so cynical. Like, oh yeah, it's cool. The guy got out of the car. He got smashed. Wait, fuck it. You got out, nigga. Like, what is that, bro? Whoa. <laughs> like, like that's 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 the attitude you have. Like, oh, you got out of a car, hey, hey. bro. You you can't you can't think like that, bro. That's 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 ridiculous. Yeah. I that's not what I'm thinking. I'm saying he's more at fault. Yeah. All right. All right. Whatever. All right. So, continue. Nah, I have nothing to say. What do you want to talk about? All right. Let me see the show sheet here real quick. See what we got here. All right. What did you think about uh, Manziel's performance this weekend? I don't really know, to be honest. With you. Like, no. I, like, like I, I. Whatever I you, I you didn't watch you didn't watch Manziel play this weekend. Yeah, I did. And what what did you think of his his performance? I thought he played pretty good. Yeah, I thought he did, I thought he looked well. His arm looked good, his instinct looked good. He made some plays. He yeah. ran the ball, like the guy. The guy did. I think he did great. Hey Frank, you know what? I have an idea. Let's regroup. Okay. You are listening to SoFloRadio.com. By the Glass. By the Glass is a show about beverage culture. Brad Hubbard. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the dots on how everything works together. It's really all about how we enjoy things, how we enjoy life, and how beverages play a big part in that. I'm going to bring in people that are going to display their aspect of the culture. I'm going to bring in people that are going to show you different products. We're going to look at places where people go to consume these beverages and how they all interact. Things are built around the actual beverage itself. By the Glass. Thursdays from 6 to 7. Only on SoFlow Radio. We asked this gentleman to participate in our radio taste test challenge. On one table, terrestrial radio. On the other, soflowradio.com. Do you have your blindfold on? Yes. Try a bite of this. <clears throat> oh, God, that's awful. Tastes like the soiled briefs of a lonely fat man. <clears throat> you just had a taste of all sports and corporate backed right wing assassin talk radio. Now give this a try. Mmm. That's gotta be SoFloRadio.com. Mmm. Entertaining, funny, informative. I love it. Can I have more? SoFloRadio.com. A full plate of delicious entertainment. The Owen Frank Noodle Show. (laughs) So how do people actually do it, males, in... What in the mean? region. Nah, see, I don't... Dude, I, that's... No, if you say you had that much pain on your arm and legs, that's yeah. that's unacceptable. At that point, something's see, I, going on. I don't I don't go to that level, though. I use... I, I trim with a, with a little machine, bro. You little know buzzer? Saying? Little buzzer. Buzz down there, a little manscape. <laughs> and we're good to go. Hey, bro, you got a manscape nowadays. No chick wants to go down there and, you know what I'm saying, feel hairs. Hey, no, that's terrible. That's and terrible. And neither do we, so you got... Yeah, it goes yeah, both ways, it right? It goes both ways, brother. You know what I'm saying? Some chicks go down there, you got hair, and they're like, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Let me come back up. Hold on, cowboy. Yeah, exactly. The Owen Frank Noodle Show, Tuesday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. only on SoFloRadio.com. You are tuned in to the Owen Frank Noodle Show.
Oh, have you not heard? It was my understanding that everyone had heard. Heard what? Brian, don't! Oh, well, a bird, bird, bird. For birds are worth a well, a bird, bird, bird. For birds are worth a well, a bird, bird, bird. For birds are worth a well, a bird, bird, bird. For birds are worth a On soulflowradio.com. So we're back. We're going to talk about Johnny Manziel and Hoyer and NFL talk. So Frank, tell me what do you think about Manziel and Hoyer's performance the other night? They played on Saturday, correct? Yeah. Um, well, Cleveland Browns preseason is must see TV right now. Um... I think Manziel did good. I mean, I think he looks the part. I think that um, he's a quarterback who doesn't get enough credit for his arm strength. And you saw it on this. I mean, he's playing against preseason guys. You know what I mean? Let's, uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But for what he did, I was impressed. I mean, he looked good instinctively. He looked good arm-wise. The running around, I can do without a little bit because – you're playing against third stringers and second stringers, and people aren't playing as fast because it's preseason. So you're going to get away with more running. But to me, it looked like he was playing another Texas A&M game. And um, he fell short in a few drives, but I saw enough promise there and enough pop off of him where um, I think he's going to start. I, I don't think there's any way possible that, that Hoyer starts for the Browns. I think um, that there's there's no upside to it. You either make Cleveland Brown football relevant again or you don't. And by starting Hoyer, you don't. And if you play Johnny Manziel week one, people will tune in to watch the Cleveland Browns just to see what Manziel does. So I think he's your starter for week one with the Browns. Well, initially I had disagreed with you. I thought Hoyer would start because from what it looked like in practice, Manziel didn't look like he could actually complete some passes. Some days he was good, some days he was erratic. But he's a gamer. He stepped on the field, and he looked like he belonged there. And that's the most important thing. Even though the offensive line of Cleveland was terrible that day, they didn't give him too much time to throw. But when he had a little bit of time, he made some completions. He made some plays. He made a couple of plays where he stepped up in the pocket and actually made some nice throws. And the writing's on the wall. I mean, the Cleveland Browns signed Grossman today as a backup, which I don't care what their coach says. That makes Hoyer very expendable. And... There's teams out there that could use a guy like Hoyer. A perfect example is the Houston Texans. I know you picked them to win the division last week, but Jesus, Ryan Fitzpatrick sucks, and that's not going to happen. But if you put Hoyer on a team like the Texans, uh, I think he's a better option than Fitzpatrick. But I'm not an expert. I'm not a QB guy, but I agree with you. I think Manziel has to start. Um, it's not like Hoyer's that much better than him if he is at all. Manziel's probably the better fit right now. And you have no choice. You got to put this kid out there, see if he can actually handle it, see what he could do, and and see how it goes. I kind of feel bad for him a little bit because I do think he has all the heart in the world and he has all the talent. Talking about Manziel or Hoyer? Manziel, Manziel. Okay. But I feel like if if Gordon doesn't play, which let's say he's going to be suspended, uh, they do have Miles, they do have Jed Cameron. Yeah, that's not and, a bad receiving core. But with Gordon, they're, my, they're that much better. Correct. Well, he's he's one of the best receivers in the league. Yeah, and he's one of those guys that he could he'll bail them out of some plays here and there, and he'll probably end up getting some long touchdowns where Gordon can stretch the field and he can scramble and bam, they get a quick you know forty yard bomb behind the defense while he scrambles. So I don't want him to be set up for failure. But there's one thing about Johnny Football that I that I when I watched him in college plays that I've never seen, and I always talk about this. With people, I go, I've never seen Nick Saban pull his hair no, absolutely. like he did when yeah. he played that guy. <laughs> so if you can have Nick Saban do that, you got something going on. And he he just listen. Yeah, he had him on a mission. I, I was watching yeah. I was watching the NFL network and his practices and, and, and all the live streams and 
a couple of balls he underthrew, which they were talking about his arm and the et cetera. But when homeboy walks out on the field, he's just a different animal. Yeah, he, he's he's definitely a gamer. You think back right now at all the crap that was talked about Manziel um, uh, hanging out with uh, Bieber and how we bring him up every show and everything like that. But you see now after he plays only for a quarter and no one cares about that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And if he does it again and he wins games, no one's going to care. Correct. Right? No one's going to care. The best player in the NFL was Lawrence Taylor. He smoked crack, smoked three rocks the night before the game, and he uh, went out, had seven sacks, two interceptions, and a touchdown. And he was single-handedly win games for the Giants. So, And no one cared that he was a drug addict. As long as he won football games, he was fine. I, I think as long as he can win games and his teammates respect him, I think – Look, he's the quarterback. He's got to know the game at a different level compared to his other teammates. If if I am a receiver, I need to know what my routes are and what the audibles are. When you're the quarterback, you got to know what everybody's doing on the field. If he could win games and have the respect of his teammates and he could party, then by all means, I can care less. But th yeah. the bottom line is just having the respect of your teammates. When you start to party and go out of control, I'm not saying him in general. I'm saying and, and just and not him specifically, just in general. If you're that guy on the team that, that you start to party and it's affecting how the team is playing on Sundays, those your teammates will tell you, and it will reflect on the field. And I think that's just bottom line. As long as his teammates know that he's coming to work and he knows what he's doing, they can care less what he does. Because those are the guys that are working hard day in and day out to be a better team and to, put a, you know, to, to win games on Sunday. I, the coaching staff, I know the coaching staff in the NFL is huge. But I think as a quarterback, you got to have the respect of the other 10 guys in that huddle. No, they absolutely. have to be able to look at you and believe and in you. And trust you, yes. And trust you. If they don't, it it, it just doesn't work. Which it I think is the case in Dallas most of the time, and people don't want to see that with with Romo. I think that's one of the, the issues there on that team. But that's on a side note. Um, don't, the, don't the Browns play the, the Redskins? On Monday night. On Monday night? What did, you th did you see the Redskins preseason game? Actually, no, I didn't. All right. Kirk Cousins outplayed rg3 and, did he yeah and like i've and, <laughs> and i've been funny <laughs> and i've been saying this for two years kirk cousins is the better quarterback on that team rg3 might have the name and he might have the hype and they traded three first round draft choices for him that guy is not better than kirk cousins first of all he's not a better passer than he is if you watch football the way we watch football you'll see it off the screen kirk cousins throws the ball better and is more accurate than RG3 is. RG3 just has legs. But those legs, you can only use to a certain degree in the NFL. And he did as good as he did the first year because of the type of offense that he ran. Players and coaches had not scouted him yet, so he got away with all the things that he was getting away with. And he's just not a better quarterback than Kirk Cousins. He's just not. And, and people are going to listen to me right now and think that I'm absolutely crazy. Watch and see. All right. Well, let me ask Watch you a question. And, and and it's funny because quarterback wise, I think Kirk Cousins is a better quarterback. I think what Robert Griffin has is he has that that almost like that Yasiel Puig roof that you know he's so athletic and so crazy that he yes. can blow up. Yes. But I think Kirk Cousins is more of of a prototypical quarterback that can run a system and and it'll work. He plays the game NFL style. So so the question is this: if if we see it like right. that. Other NFL teams have to see it. Correct. So you think they've picked up the phone and called the Redskins? I mean, and say yeah. like a team like like a Houston or 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 a team I don't I don't know just a team that needs a quarterback for for arguments. Like sake. the Texans. Like the Texans or the Raiders who could have used a quarterback. They drafted one, but let's say they've reached out to the Redskins. Do you think the Redskins have not let go of Kirk Cousins because they know that RG three they might give him this year, and then next year they might turn around and be like, hey. Well, you, I, it, it doesn't work out. Listen. Or, 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 are we looking at it from a different perspective? That since we're not experts, and then other NFL teams don't really think Kirk Cousins is that player. That he's he's a type of guy, almost not like a Matt Shaw, but um, no, Kirk, like a, like a Matt Flynn that had a a a, a couple crazy games over the Packers, and the teams went crazy to get him, and then it didn't pan out. You think that's hurting Kirk Cousins, or you think the Redskins know that they got something that's good? And if this guy doesn't pan out, Kirk Cousins is coming in. I think they know that they have something good. And A, what happened last year in the last two games, 
Shanahan basically benched RG3. He wasn't going to say that because RG3 has a brand and they have so much invested in him. But Shanahan wanted to see what Kirk Cousins had because he knew that he was about to get fired. And it was going to get fired because of RG3. And I think he did it kind of in a backhanded way where he benched RG3, put Kirk Cousins out there. I started him in my fantasy league. I wanted to point that out. All right. And the guy threw for almost 400 yards. All right. Um, so Kirk Cousins, he's just a better, I mean, I don't know if he's a better quarterback, but he's definitely the better passer. You could definitely see that. Do you think with a rookie coach, Gruden is their coach, Jay Gruden. He's a rookie coach. Uh, you, offensive you, you guy. Don't, you don't get these shots to win. You don't get the shot to be head coach that often in the NFL. I mean, he's got to play the better player. If you're if you're seeing as Kirk Cousins is, I haven't seen the game, but I'll catch it on the NFL Network. And and obviously he's probably playing against second string backups too. But whatever. But I I see your point. I know I know what you're saying about Kirk Cousins. I'm actually a guy that I think he's a better quarterback fit for a team than RG three. So. I mean, where do you put yourself as the head coach? Do you make that decision? Or Snyder's the guy that looks at you and says, hey, you're going to start RG3 no matter what? You're stuck between a rock and a hard place there. Number one, RG3 is in good with Daniel Snyder. They invested three years of first-round picks in him. All right? They basically built a brand name for RG3, and they have all this hype behind it that there's no way possible. All right? You can't sit him down. There's no way possible you can sit him down. You can't. You can't the only way it. to sit him down is he has to fail completely, where at the end of the day, there's no choice. But Or what's going to happen is the way he plays, he's reckless. I've never seen a football player not be able to take a hit as much as RG3. He's going to get destroyed by week seven or eight. He's going to get hit and get de- decapitated. I mean, I hope it doesn't happen to him, but every time he gets hit, it looks like he's going to explode. So I think that's what's going what's to happen. I think he's eventually going to get hurt. You're going to put Cousins in. And then Cousins going to go on a run. And then you're going to have the quarterback controversy. That's how I think it'll play out. I could that's be wrong, but that's that's my evaluation on it. Fair enough. Staying with the quarterbacks, our boy Tannehill actually did not look too bad. And he was missing some of his receivers. He, he look, Wallace he, didn't play. He looked decent. Uh, Hartline didn't play. Right. Clay didn't play. Um, I mean, he looked pretty good. He was, he was six for six. Yeah, he looked good. He looked good. But, um, but also, listen. Tannehill looked good, but I think the offensive scheme looked a lot better. Great point. As far as what they were doing, bringing guys in motion, setting guys up on linebackers, it seemed like the offense that, I mean, first of all, it was was that first drive. Bill Lazor. But the offense looked like they had a a, a concept that worked. It looked like an NFL offense. It didn't look like a Dolphin offense. Yes. They looked like they were actually doing something, and they actually – we're being innovative, I guess we could say. So, as far as Tannehill, yes, he looked good. I think the offensive scheme looked better. Yes. So, I think the Dolphins at that point were, were a little bit better. There's one quarterback that actually did impress me, and it was uh, Blake Bortles from Jacksonville. I was the first guy to say that. I didn't think this guy was ready for the NFL. I think he had all that talent in the world. I think he has the size. I think eventually he was going to be a good quarterback. I didn't think he was going to be ready right now. And I saw him play the other day, and homeboy's making some serious throws out there. I'm talking about these guys were playing a zone coverage, dropping guys back, almost four or five guys in a zone, and he's nailing guys on, like, skinny posts, deep in routes, almost 20, 25 yards downfield. I'm talking about NFL throws. I'm, I'm, I was with you. I was on the opposite side of, of, um, of uh, Manziel and Hoyer. I want to tell you right now, the Jacksonville Jaguars got to start Bortles. And they don't want to. They're totally against it. They want to sit him down. They want to start Chad Henney. And they, they got to start this kid. He's much better than Henney. No, I mean, Chad Henney's a muerto. I mean, what are you going to do with that guy? Um, I'll, Going back to the Dolphin game, did you see um, did you see the kick return by Jarvis Landry from LSU? Yeah, that kid's a spark player. That kid's a good player. I mean, if anything that came out from that game was the way the offense looked, Tannehill and Jarvis Landry to me looked like a real legit NFL player. No, no, that I mean, kid's good. That he, kid can play. That kid he, can play. He jumps off the screen. As soon as he catches the ball, he's just electric out there. Yeah. And one of the first punt returns he got, I think it was like 45 yards. He was real impressive. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe you see some something from the Dolphins this year, from, from the Groundhog. So, um, don't fall into the trap. Don't fall into the, fall into the <laughs> trap. <laughs> Man, I got a friend of mine that called me and was like, oh, the Dolphins are going 10 and 6. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, what are you nah. smoking, bro? Uh, you have New England in the division. Yeah. 
No, I don't see them. <laughs> I don't see them going ten and six. But, but I, look, again, my whole thing with them, their defense has always been pretty good. Okay, they've had always they've always had a top ten defense, and they're very good defensively in the red zone. Like the other teams will get in the red zone, but don't make you kick field goals. Yeah, it's their offense just sucks, dude. Like that's just what it's been with the Dolphins. These score these games of 13, 10, 20 to fifteen or twenty because they, they have just, no they have no one on offense that could break the game open. <laughs> Never, they they, they, they never, never have. They, they never have that. But if you look at their and, team, and now, even they, when they do have those players, they don't use them they correctly. They don't know how to use them. That's that's where I'm hoping this guy can come in, laser, and maybe make some adjustments to the team, and and maybe they get a little bit better. I, I don't know. I again, the running back situation. Okay. It it's one of those that it's up in the air. Lamar Miller actually looks pretty good. No, Sean Moreno's coming back, but we signed No. Sean Moreno for for a reason. Do we do we, what's going on there? Do you see Miller as potentially getting more carries? Is Moreno gonna get more carries? Is Moreno gonna be just a third down back? Uh, what's? I mean, I, I can't really figure it out. What do you think? I mean, in this offense, I, I think what you're gonna see with Lamar Miller is you're gonna see him get the ball a lot out in space, like what um what Sean Payton does with guys like Darren Sproles, and he used to do with Reggie Bush, where you kind of isolate the running back to the wide part of the field. And you just let him make plays on his own, which is what we should have done with Reggie Bush, where um, you you dink him the ball and you put him on a one-on-one situation with either the outside linebacker or the corner, and you make that player beat him. So, I, I mean, I like what I see from Laser right now, and I think you'll see a great year this year from Lamar Miller and Charles Clay. I mean, I think those those players are going to be used effectively. I mean, I, as far as our receiving core, Mike Wallace and Brian Hartline, Meh, like I don't think too much of those guys. You know, Mike Wallace was who he was because he played in Pittsburgh, and most of the time that he made big plays was off broken plays and thrown by Ben Roethlisberger. So I don't know if he's gonna have those same opportunities here because um, he's just not that kind of receiver. I think he's a very one trick pony kind of guy where he only he's only good on the straightaway. He's not a possession guy or a guy he's that not. he's not that guy that is third and 13 and you could go to him on a, on a deep comeback and he's going to make the play. He could stretch out. He's a big body, a big target. Right. He's not that guy. And then Hardline, I, he, yeah. I like Hardline. He's a tough little player, but he's not that guy either. He just doesn't have that speed, that separation speed. And huh. that's, that's our problem. We can't seem to get a big third down when we need like a third right. and eight. We just can't get it. It's, huh. it's, Hardline to me is is a catch and fall guy. That's how I see him. He catches the ball and he falls down. That guy's not gonna get you any yak. He's not gonna get you anything. Because he, he always catches the ball with his chest. He doesn't yeah, catch the he, ball with his hands. He's a, Correct. He's, he's a catch and fall guy. There's there's not much there w- with him. Um, and Mike Wallace. I mean, now that we have this rookie from LSU, we're not. I I think he's gonna take over all the special teams duties, which is punt return and kick return. But I think Mike Wallace is better suited for that. Then he is what he's playing right now. With well, the he Dolphins. did say earlier this year he wanted to go back to right. doing some kick returns and punt returns. He actually said that that actually made him feel like like he was part of flow of the game. Right, kind of like got him into the game a little bit. So maybe he does that. But also, then you know how the Dolphins are going to think can't put him out there to get hurt. It's there's a ton of things out there. Well, Frank was saying about Mike Wallace. I agree 100 percent because I've been saying it on my show for about three weeks. The issue with going deep with this team is that Tannehill sucks throwing the deep ball. That's one thing he had in Pittsburgh. Roethlisberger was very accurate throwing the deep ball. Tannehill just isn't. And, and yeah, and if you see the highlights of when Mike Wallace made his plays, most of them are off broken plays. Yes, they're, it's, they're, just, it's just they're not yes. even set plays. It's Roethlisberger improvising, and they can't t- they can't bring him down, and he just points. There's a couple of he would just point, point at him, boom, and just throw the ball, and then he and make at that the point, play. Yeah, if, as long as he it take was, off on the on the corner, he's gone. He gets behind the safety, he's gone. It, Tannehill has a, has an issue throwing the deep ball for sure, but I also I think that the offensive line is just terrible for Miami Dolphins the past couple of years. And he was he was a young guy and he's he's a receiver playing quarterback. That everybody knows, so we'll see what happens. Uh, call into the show at nine five four nine nine zero 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 three six. I'm laughing because I think the Cowboys need un despojo, bro. They're terrible right now. How could Skandrick he fails a drug test? He's out for four games and they popped him for dropping mollies. I mean, I I just don't know how you continue this Tony Romo thing. Like, I, I what's going on? It's like, to me, Tony Romo right now and Jerry Jones, it's like Isaiah Thomas with the Knicks owner. Why? Why do you continue in that vortex? 
of manure that you just keep swirling around and swirling around because they're not going to do anything again this year. I mean, what do you Dallas Cowboys, which is supposedly America's team, one of the biggest markets in the NFL, Jerry Jones, that you make yourself to be out this outstanding businessman. Why do you continue to go with this clown as your starting quarterback? Because that's what he is. Tony Romo is a clown, all right? And he's that quarterback, as you were mentioning in the beginning of the show, that gets in the huddle, and those guys look at him, and they don't respect him because they know who he is, all right? And I, I don't want to hear all these things about, oh, look at his stats and look at this. No, that guy is a duck, all right? That's what Tony Romo is. He's a duck, all right? He makes no plays when the game is on the line. He's won no meaningful games. The guy is just, in my opinion, you get in the huddle with that guy and you look at him and like there's just no way I'm going to win a game with this guy. I also think something that I that I like to bring up that a lot of people don't bring up. I have a problem too with his throwing motion. He has the strangest most awkward throwing motion. It's kind of like if he pauses and then flicks the ball up, he just looks weird doing it. It's it's a very awkward throwing motion to me which he doesn't really load his back foot. He kind of throws off his front foot and flicks his wrist his, a little his bit. His mechanics are, are, yeah. are a little and bit he off. And he makes him hang but the ball in the air, you know, which causes a lot of interceptions. The other day I was watching the NFL Network, and obviously they, they talk about football all day there, which is obvious. And they were they brought up a stat, and I was like, that can't be possible. And, and it, it, my God, I, it, I'm going to say it, and it's completely wrong, but I think Tony Stewart in the past, like I mean, not Tony, Tony Stewart, uh, Tony Romo in the past five years. Right has led the most fourth-quarter comebacks in, oh, the, in the regular season now. Okay. In but, the regular season, right? in the last five years of all the NFL quarterbacks. But how many of those resulted to wins? Okay, here's the thing. Because he does come back. Sorry, Frank. He does come back, but then he finds a way to blow it Again, in the fourth. I, I don't remember exactly, but they said that, and then there was something that his completion rate in the fourth quarter was like the second highest in the NFL in the last five years. And I was... I was like, well, we, we, that's that's that number is skewed because they could be behind by a ton of points, and he's throwing the ball. The defense is just letting right. him catch a ton of passes, so that's that number is skewed. But I found ironic the number of mm -hmm. the most comebacks. Right. And I've had Romo on a couple fantasy football teams, so you know when you have your quarterback, that's almost mm -hmm. a guy who scores the most points, and you'll watch him play. And yes, he is very frustrating for about three quarters, and then in the fourth quarter he seems to wake up. Who Romo? Yeah. Okay. Until he throws the pick to end the game. Yeah. Until he throws it. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, the, I just found it, like, okay, that's good. If Tony, Listen, I'm not if, defending Tony Romo. I, I I, think he's one of those guys that he has all the talent to win a Super Bowl. I think he has all the talent to be that guy. No, no, he doesn't. But talent. No, he doesn't. Talent's different than Moxie. Okay, but talent's that, different than Hart. Talent as a quarterback, you have to have between the ears as well. Oh, no. Well, hold on a second. That's that's mental capacity. We're talking about talent. Right. There's a lot of guys out on the street right now that have the talent to play in the NFL, but they don't have the capacity to play in the NFL. Correct. Okay? But so Tony Romo has the talent. Yeah. I mean, he makes throws sometimes. You're like, whoa. When it comes natural to him, he can make most of the throws that you ask a quarterback to make. I do agree that his he's a mental midget, and that's one of his biggest problems. But we're talking about arm he, strength, he's size. Right. He has the physical tools, that talent, to play the NFL. That's what you know. What's you know what's frustrating about him, that the Cowboys see it, other people see it. They're just waiting for him to snap out of his cloud and eventually turn into that player. But I don't think it's ever going to happen. He's not going to. He came out of. He wasn't even drafted. He's just happy to be where he's at right now. He got to date Jessica Simpson. He's a starting quarterback for the Cowboys, and this is basically, I mean, who he is, which is. N not a bad thing. I mean, it's amazing that he's the starting quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, but you're never going to win with that guy. You just are not going to win with that guy. He's he's just he, he he the guy's a duck to me. He just he he can't do it. Listen. What quarterbacks do you put you put what quarterbacks do you think you can play right now on except obviously for the big guys. We know the big guys would win, but you could put on the Cowboys and and would win and more than he did. Right. Besides the top 5 or 6 that we know, we're talking about guys like the Matthew Staffords of the world, the Andy Daltons, the Matt Ryan. What's this kid from the Eagles? Foles. Nick Foles. I think he. I think he would succeed in the Cowboys. Well, I, I here's here's the thing though too. You have a problem there in Dallas, which the number one problem is that Jerry Jones doesn't let anyone do anything there. He's he's the millennial Al Davis is who he is. Since day one, it's been like he's that. He's always intervening in 
everything that that's, that goes on that's there. That's why Jimmy wrote out. That's why Jimmy I was about to say that. That's right. why Jimmy wrote out. So and he's never been able to win and he has all these coaches that he can control. So until that situation doesn't get figured out there, they'll do nothing there. They'll do nothing because he's already shown already that he does not have the mind. I mean, he's a great business mind. Jerry Jones is I mean, he got that stadium built. He goes all out. He's one of the one of the most richest owners in the NFL and the guy knows what he's doing. But when it comes to football decision, I, he's just he's just way too emotional. He doesn't have the knowledge, and all he does is just he just he destroys his own team. He Not just, for sure. So we're gonna continue to talk football on the other side. You're listening to the Owen Frank Noodle Show on SoFloRadio.com. You are listening to SoFloRadio.com. By the Glass. By the Glass is a show about beverage culture. Brad Hubbard. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the dots on how everything works together. It's really all about how we enjoy things, how we enjoy life, and how beverages play a big part in that. I'm going to bring in people that are going to display their aspect of the culture. I'm going to bring in people that are going to show you different products. We're going to look at places where people go to consume these beverages and how they all interact. Things are built around the actual beverage itself. By the Glass. Thursdays from 6 to 7. Only on SoFlow Radio. We asked this gentleman to participate in our radio taste test challenge. On one table, terrestrial radio. On the other, SoFloRadio.com. Do you have your blindfold on? Yes. Try a bite of this. <clears throat> oh, God, that's awful. Tastes like the soiled briefs of a lonely fat man. <clears throat> you just had a taste of all sports and corporate backed right wing assassin talk radio. Now give this a try. Mmm, that's got to be SoFloRadio.com. Mmm, entertaining, funny, informative. I love it. Can I have more? SoFloRadio.com, a full plate of delicious entertainment. The Owen Frank Noodle Show. <laughs> so how do people actually do it, males, in... In the mean? region. Nah, see, I don't... Dude, I, that's... No. If you say you have that much pain on your arm and legs, that's yeah. that's unacceptable. At that point, something's see, going on. I don't I don't go to that level, though. I use... I, I trim with a, with a little machine, bro. You little know buzzer? Little buzzer. Buzz down there, a little manscape. <laughs> and we're good to go. Hey, bro, you got a manscape nowadays. No chick wants to go down there and, you know what I'm saying, feel hairs. Hey, no, that's terrible. That's and terrible. And either way, so you got... Yeah, it goes yeah, both ways, it right? It goes both ways, brother. You know what I'm saying? Some chicks go down there, you got hair, and they're like, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Let me come back up. Hold on, cowboy. Yeah, exactly. The Owen Frank Noodle Show, Tuesday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. only on SoFloRadio.com. You are tuned in to the Owen Frank Noodle Show. Hi! I'm looking for Ray Finkel and a clean pair of shorts on SoFlowRadio.com. Soccer style kicker, graduated from Collier High, June 1976, Stetson University Honors graduate, class of 1980, holds two NCAA Division I records, one for most points in a season, one for distance, former nicknamed the Mule, the first and only pro athlete ever to come out of Collier County, and one hell of a model American. So, Tommy, where's Cheeto? It's not even summer. Why is the DJ keep on playing summertime sadness? After doing the bathroom, can we go smoke a cigarette? I really need one. But first, let me take a selfie. Tony Romo's that guy taking selfies. Let me take a selfie. Sure, with Mark Sanchez. <laughs> Mark Sanchez. <laughs> that's another guy that's wow. He played well the other night, actually. I saw a little bit of it. I was like, hey, look at Mark doing his thing. Look, I think Mark Sanchez, for as bad as he is, is a more ballsy quarterback than Tony Romo. That he is. Okay. That he is. That he is. Yeah, he, he might not have all the utensils and the tools that Homeboy has, but he, he yeah, yeah. If, if, if you could put... Mark Sanchez's balls on Tony Romo, and we got ourselves a pretty decent quarterback. <laughs> Look, <laughs> Tony Romo, like, w- what I give him credit for is his, his escapability. I, I I mean, this guy has escapability like not many quarterbacks in the NFL. He has pocket presence with, with the best of them because I've seen him make plays that are miraculous, that he gets he's about to get sacked, he dunks, dives, dips, and he gets the throwaway. So, I mean, he does do some things well, but – what, there, there's just some players that, when the going gets tough, they, they really don't get going, and that's, I mean, the uh, the reputation of of Tony Romo follows him. You could pretty much see it for yourself. So, 
No, nah, he's he's and and this whole thing with numbers that he's the most prolific quarterback in the fourth quarter. I mean, you could go all day with numbers. You can do numbers on how many times you went to the bathroom before the game or what shoes you wore and how you did with those stats. I mean, numbers go on forever. These people that latch on to numbers are lazy and don't watch the game. That The numbers are maybe 25% of what really happens in a game. You have so many other situations that you cannot calculate with numbers that happen that um, you just can't explain unless you know the game. And, and that's what I think happens with Tony Romo, the people that defend him. They defend him because they don't really follow the game. If you follow the game, you know that this guy just can't win when when it gets down to it. Well, he has the reputation. Yes. The fumble, the extra point. Yeah. A couple of years ago in Washington, he threw that pick at the end of the game. Last year, he threw a pick again when Miles Austin actually broke open on that slant. And he decided to roll a little bit left and throw across his body. Yes. So, again, he has that reputation until he's able to snap that and take this team deep in the playoffs. Which he's not going to do. And with Jason Garrett which, as well. Which is exact, and, that guy's not a good coach. And their defense is just terrible. Right now, they're just and, bad. And they lost Skandrick now, too. Yeah, Poppy Molly's. He lost Skandrick. <laughs> like, I don't, I mean, wow. He, at least he, he was like, listen, I was in Mexico and, you know, whatever is it happening. I'm suspended four games. That's an expensive Molly. Yeah. Let me tell you. So. Little football talk. We'll get into that. If you guys want to call in, 954-990-0036. You're listening to the Owen Frank Noodle Show on Soul Flow Radio. We're going to transition here a little bit to the NBA, Frank. As we already know, it's it's been out there and, and the discussion of Kevin Love, even though it's not etched in stone yet, but I think everybody knows that Kevin Love is going to be playing for Cleveland, which that makes Cleveland... One of the top two teams to win, not only the East, but the NBA championship, which puts LeBron right back into that pressure cooker of he's got to win, which is what we've all here in Miami has been saying that he doesn't want to do that. That's kind of why he set up in that letter. You know, oh, we're not there yet. It's going to take a couple years, you know, blah, 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 whatever. If they get Kevin Love on this team, even though I think defensively, defensively they, they, they have some deficiencies that they have to cover up, and the coaching staff is, I don't know if they're ready for, for what's going to happen. But if you look on paper, it's a pretty decent basketball team. I think if Derrick Rose is healthy, there is no way in hell anyone is beating the Bulls in the East. They are I, that much better than everyone else. I agree. I've picked the Bulls to win. And I think Derrick, I think, I think it's just the Bulls in general. The, the, just the team, Derrick Rose. The coaching staff. The experience. The experience. They've been there. And the fact that those guys seem to have missed the boat the past couple of years because of Derrick Rose's injury. And I think they're going to see the, the, you know, they're going to seize the moment, let's say. They're going to see the opportunity there. Indiana's and, out of the way. Yeah, they're gone. There's Miami's out of the way. Yeah. yeah. No. Miami is maybe the third or fourth best team in Mi the East. Miami, they are not better than the Bulls. They're not better than the Bulls, and they're not better than the, than the Cavs. Let's, yeah. let's be honest. Let's, we let's we, be, we yeah. can say everything we want to say, yeah. but if Kevin Love is on the Cavaliers and, and the Bulls are, are intact and healthy, the Heat is, I agree, uh, the Heat's a 3-4 seed. Uh, I even think I would uh, – this is this is stretching. And, Washington you know, might, might think, come up and beat them. I would say I think Washington yeah. would be a three seed over the Heat. Washington has a very good basketball team. They're young. They're fast. Uh, I don't know. The I, addition of Paul Pierce in that locker room is going to be a big factor. Yes. Okay. You have a veteran there who's won before, oh, made I, big I like, shots, I is like a Washington champion. A lot. I like Washington a lot. He'll Dirk. go in there and tell John Wall exactly how to do it. Yep. So um, no. Washington might be the third best team. But going back to Cleveland, um, I mean, they just have a lot of question marks. I mean, the defense, uh, first year, okay, playing together, it takes a while for that chemistry to get going. Okay, and I mean, something else that I'd like to bring up, okay, I don't know if you heard um, what happened with Drake and, and the Raptors where Drake was out in a concert and Durant was there in the concert and he shouted him out by saying, hey, uh, KD, why don't you come over to, Toron to Toronto because supposedly Drake is the official spokesperson for the Toronto Raptors, which I, I had no idea. I found out, out about this today. Yeah, he's, he, he's like on floor seats there. He sits yeah. right next to the coach, actually. Right. It's, he's like the, the official spokesperson for the Raptors. I guess he's DJ Irie over there for, for the Raptors. 
He got fined twenty five thousand dollars just for shouting him out on the mic. The for, Raptors or or him? No, the NBA. Oh, the NBA fined the, the NBA Raptors. Fined the Raptors okay. for him just shouting out to KD saying, "Come over to the Raptors." So but wait a second, is he is Drake part of the Toronto Raptors? He, he's the official spokesperson. Oh, for so the, he's like an oh, ambassador. So he, he's also. like an ambassador. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't see. I didn't know that. I just thought they were right. Any... Well, I didn't know this either. I found <laughs> this out today. Okay. So I mean, if there's sanctions for that. I mean, Cleveland is openly talking about re-signing Kevin Love three years from now. Isn't there, like, some sort of conflict there, or just LeBron is just too powerful that nothing will happen to the Cavaliers? I mean, where where's the commissioner on this? I, to be honest with you, I, I don't know if there's, if there's any type of litigation where the NBA has, you know, I guess they could tell Cleveland, look, you can't talk about it. I just know they have 30 days before they actually make the trade, but I don't know if they could talk about it or not. But the other thing now is 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 it rumors? It's more rumors that people are coming up with. The sources say, I no. Well, I, you bring up a good point. I just don't know what 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 it is the NBA can stand on as far as well, their rules. And they've asked. I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, I think they've asked LeBron about playing with Kevin Love, and I think he's answered questions on this. So it's kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? What's going on here? No, and even like Wiggins knows he's basically out. Wiggins made a comment the other day at at a, at a coach self from Kansas. Uh, he was having a camp, and he said that he he was like, "Hey, it is what it is. I can't really say anything much about it now." But hey, Minnesota's a good fit, and he was kind of like leaning towards, "I'd rather go to Minnesota and make my own legacy, let's say, than to play under the shadow of LeBron James." And right. I kind of I respected him for that. I was no, like, hey, absolutely. Man, I said, hey, hey, do what you got to do, man. Be your man. I like, go out there and do what you got to do. 100%. First pick of the draft. Yeah, of course. You get to play wanna... with Ricky Rubio. Yeah, yeah. You know, and people are like, "Oh, don't you don't you think he would go there and he wants to win?" Uh, maybe not. Maybe he wants to do his own legacy, and you and and he in Cleveland he's gonna play under the shadow. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Le- LeBron is the yeah, general he's... manager, coach. Oh, that's another thing about he flies about, the plane about he Cleveland. Drives the bus, yeah, right. LeBron left Cleveland because he couldn't win there because he was running the show. He came over here for structure. Now he's going back again to running the show. So I want to see how that's gonna work out because I don't think it's, it's gonna work out too well because what. The coach is gonna come in, draw a play, or something's gonna somebody's gonna say something, and LeBron's gonna be like, "No, I don't want to do that. I want to do this." How is that gonna go? There's there's not gonna be any control there. I I actually think if like I I was talking to someone today at my job, and I said, if I put myself in the shoes of this coach, I mean, how do you approach LeBron? Yeah, you, you can. He's like, bigger than like, life. Like how do you how do, he's uncoachable? Coach, yeah, if I'm the coach, I'm. Don't take this. I mean, I, I, I don't want to say this like in a bad way, but I'd be intimidated almost. Like, okay, I'm this guy. I'm, I was the Russian coach. I really don't have any NBA experience. I really have nothing to stand on. How do I look at LeBron in the face and, and like call a play and he's going to tell me something and then he's going to go to Dan Gil- Like, exactly. Like, yeah. wh- what, do you, what do you do as a coach? Listen, don't get ex- twisted. LeBron James was never coached ever in his entire life ever. Until, until he got here to the Heat. Yeah, what's the high school coach going to do with him? He's If you watch him play in Cleveland, I mean, a guy that size – and his stature did never posted up in Cleveland. If you remember in the finals, JG Barea covered him down in the in the low post, and he wasn't even trying. He could do nothing. Yeah, because he has could no do, moves down there. He's, he's just, got no moves down there. Yeah, now he got he coached here under Pat Riley. Correct. Now he has those moves. That's what he got down here. And the fact that he he he's just come out and he's talking now like if the last four years in Miami never happened. It, it just makes it seem that way. He talks to the Cleveland people and he doesn't want to mention Miami. He never mentioned us in the pep rally. He never. He hasn't said a word. I, I thought he would at least take the time and be classy enough in that pep rally to come out and mention the the, the Heat organization and Pat Riley as as a classy NBA legend would do. And it's just like if it never happened. Well, um, as the day go, as the days go by, and and you guys, you guys both know what my opinion was with the LeBron thing where I was I was the guy that when he came back to Miami I was going to stand up and cheer him because yeah. of what he gave us for 4 years etc and you you kind of told me ah, I'm going to boo him whatever you know and I was like yeah bro that guy but the more goes by the more the, the more, more I like I now I want to punch him in the face right. because like I don't see why he can't just all he had to say was hey Miami you guys were great fans thank you for 4 years you know etc etc no big deal you know he could have put a little ad in the Miami Herald and the Sun Sentinel whatever you know and he, and 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 but now, uh, that Christmas Day game is going to be crazy, bro. People are going to be paying mad money to go to that game. I hope they throw batteries at him. I, I'm actually going to start this right here on, on, on the show right now. 
buy a pack of Duracells before you go to the game and launch them at LeBron when he gets introduced at the Heat game. All right, that's that's gonna be started right here, the Owen Frank Noodle Show. That's gonna be our little <laughs> revolution here against M- Mr. James. We're gonna throw batteries at James. Yeah, like the the more that I hear, it's like the more I'm like, dude, this guy even like I I. I mean, how how do you disrespect a guy like 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 Riley and Mickey Harrison who gave you everything? Correct. What they didn't give you, they didn't give your friends some access here and there. They didn't let you stay one extra night in a city so you could go to a party. I mean, how, how much of a little bitch are you, dude? Are are you playing against history or what are you doing? Yeah, you know, I don't get this guy. He's just such a flip flopper. He doesn't stand by anything that he says. He says something one day and goes back on the other, and and he's got no. He's got no backbone. He's got no principle. He's got no stance, and that's that's why he'll never be Jordan or he'll never be Kobe. He'll never he'll be an NBA legend when well, he retires because it's, of, it's, of his physical talent. But he will never reach all right the level that those guys have as 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 people admire those guys and look up to them because he's such a bitch. Did you hear what he said at the celebration? Every what? time he picks up the microphone, it's worse and worse. Yeah, it gets worse. Yeah. He's yeah, Frank's right. Every time he says something, it's worse. That came to me and said. LeBron, you got to do what makes you happy. I thought about that, and I was like, yeah, I think so. I I, I think it's about time. And then I thought about it and said, hell no. I'm going to do what makes my city and my state happy and that's why i came back i love you i'm back and he drops the mic so so he basically said that he didn't want to go to cleveland <laughs> is that what you got from that i don't i he was like i, I don't want to go to cleveland i did it for you guys not because i wanted to be here i don't understand what he said there what the hell was that what do you take from that i mean the, f- the funny thing is that he's trying to hype up the crowd. So when he kind of paused and he was like, you know what I do? Hell no. He was waiting for this cheer and nobody cheered. Because they were so confused. So he kind of gets, got stuck. Yeah. <laughs> Every time he opens his mouth, it, it's lies. Look, the Cleveland thing with the, when he was with Cleveland, I'm never going to wear number 23 again. Okay? Wearing 23 now again. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. Not seven. See, he didn't even make it to year five. That doesn't even, listen, that doesn't even stick out to me. What, what sticks out to me is Douchebag. the people that give him everything that he has. Like, look, when he first left Cleveland, we looked at Dan Gilbert and we looked at him like, wow, this guy is a scumbag and a piece of crap. But if you look at the backstory, Dan Gilbert gave this guy everything for seven years. What? He built him a gym. A gym, a gymnasium. He let his friends do whatever he wanted. Next to his house, by the way. Next to his house, uh, he could leave and you, fly wherever he wanted. About it. And this guy didn't have the audacity to look at him in the face and tell him, "Listen, for me, I am going to leave here, and I'm going to go chase championships because I have a better shot in Miami." He didn't have the balls to stand there in front of this yeah. owner that gave him everything. All right, he had to find out on TV, just like us. Which is the same thing that he did here with Pat Riley. He sold out Wade. He sold out Haslam. He cost him a bunch of money. Yo, I mean, this guy, I don't like this guy as a person. I think he's a little bitch is what he is. Well, he's always been coddled since he's been, you know. He's we, just, he's, yeah. a, he's a little kid. He's if a little about bitch. It, if you look at the reaction that Dan Gilbert had five years ago, or four right. years ago, you might say nowadays, well, Okay, warranted. Now, I would I would have snapped too like that. Warranted you know, because like, right, it's just like having someone over in your house. Okay, I bring you into my house. I give you food. Um, I give you rides. You can sleep here. You can do whatever you want. And then seven years into it, you just turn around and you know what I'm saying you you stick it to me somehow. I'm gonna be like, yo, are you serious? Like. I was the one that looked out for you when when no one else did, and this is how you're gonna treat me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I see your point, and that's where where yeah, you look at Dan Gilbert, and you even though what he you wrote un- was it was terrible, was terrible, but, but you, you understand you, the behavior. You understood where his feelings were coming from. You, you understand, understand the why, behavior. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Well, um, we're we're gonna continue to talk here of NBA talk. I I definitely want to get into someone that was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, one of my favorite players in NBA history. You're listening to the Owen Frank Noodle Show on SoulFlowRadio.com. You're listening to SoulFlowRadio.com. All systems are functional. And you pass the reins to Mr. Jackal, the new king.
no radio. Is there life on other planets? This is nuclear physicist Stanton Friedman, and now I'm a voice in the jackal's head. Is the government keeping secrets from us? This is Stephen Bassett, and uh, I am now a voice inside the jackal's head. Want to find out more? Listen to the jackal's head on the Soup Media Network. The biggest trick the jackal ever pulled was to convince the world <laughs> that he doesn't exist. The Amigo Show with Larry Million. Yeah, I said it. Michael Jordan was the biggest thing in the NBA. LeBron is the biggest thing in the NBA. Same type of star. I'm not going to argue who's better today. And you look at that, right, Frank? And I remember Jordan. Like, I rooted against Jordan. You know why I rooted against Jordan? Whoa! <laughs> What I meant to say was, <laughs> what I meant to say was when I, do you know why I root against? You have failed. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> the Amigo Show, Saturday mornings from 9 to noon, only on SoFloRadio.com. By the Glass. By the Glass is a show about beverage culture. Brad Hubbard. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the dots on how everything works together. It's really all about how we enjoy things, how we enjoy life, and how beverages play a big part in that. I'm going to bring in people that are going to display their aspect of the culture. I'm going to bring in people that are going to show you different products. We're going to look at places where people go to consume these beverages and how they all interact. Things are built around the actual beverage itself. By the Glass. Thursdays from 6 to 7. Only on SoFlo Radio. You are tuned in to the Owen Frank Noodles Show. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. On SoulFlowRadio.com. Hey, and when I say that, and when I say that, I really believe it. Illuminati, all through your body. LeBron James talk. We're back uh, at it. Me. Hold on, let Park, let Park freeze here a little bit. Gets me hyped right here, bro. Illuminati, baby. For sure. We're taking sure. down the new world order. You know what I'm saying? So before I get into Alonzo Morning, and we're talking about LeBron James. Correct. Stephen Curry today on the Dan Patrick show made a couple of comments that that he might be right. He might be right. And there's one thing that I like about Stephen Curry. He's one of those guys that he says what's you know what's on his chest and it is what it is. What did he say? I didn't I didn't well, hear he, the show. He was listening and I have we have the sound here, so we're gonna go ahead and better play. offensive player, me or LeBron. That's the first time I've ever been asked that question. Um me. Okay. <laughs> Gotta be, right? I, well, I, I don't know. I, I would assume you would think that you're a, you're a pure shooter. Um, I, he can score. You can too. But I, I think if it, it, you know what the correct answer is probably LeBron is a better scorer, but I think you're the better shooter. So if how's that? He, he, yeah, I, I don't I don't know because he uh, you know he obviously d- demands a lot of attention on the floor. Um, but I like to say I can distribute. You know, get get my teammates involved and. What about just putting be a points up? As well. What about points? What if I said you go out and score as many as you want in the game, and LeBron goes out, who scores more? I like to say my shot <laughs> would help me in that situation. <laughs> so, so what I do think, you think? I, I think he's absolutely right. I think as a scorer, Stephen Cor- Curry is a better scorer than LeBron is. I mean, LeBron is the more the more talented player, the more all around player. He can guard position one through five. He can play multiple positions. He can pass the ball. But Stevens Curry as a scorer, I mean, have you seen Golden My State guy games? Off. That guy's a problem. Well, it's the same thing if you ask who's a better scorer, Carmelo Anthony or LeBron James. It's Car- Carmelo, Carmelo Anthony. Anthony. But if you ask who's the better player, LeBron it's James. LeBron James. Absolutely. So if you ask the question of are you a better scorer than LeBron James, I have no problem with Stephen Curry saying, yeah, it's me and what? It yeah. is what it is. 
And if you and if you, I do watch some Golden State games, and that kid goes off when he's on. You can forget it because you can't give him an inch on that three point line. No, that guy's, kill a mi- you. that guy's a mission. And and then he's so crafty getting to the rim that he's annoying. He's one yeah. of those guys. He's he probably is one of the best scorers in the league. I would put. I like Kevin Durant as one of the best scorers. That guy can score from anywhere on the court. Carmelo Anthony and Stephen Curry. We could argue all day. Absolutely. We could argue all day. Yeah. Scoring wise, pure scores. I put those three guys at the top. No, I like that Curry said. Dan Patrick's an idiot, by the way, because he, he had no idea what to say <laughs> after he said that. He was like, oh, it was like dead silence in the radio. But he didn't Are expect you him to say that. I, 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 w- I would have followed up with, like, so you're saying you're better than LeBron James? I would have I pinned them down to that. You know what I'm saying? He, and he, he, what is anybody going to say there? Anybody's going to say, even if he asked me who's the better player, I'm going to say LeBron. No, man, I'm confident. I'm going to say I'm the better player. Oh, no, of course. Obviously not, but I'm still going to say I'm the better player. No, but it's a good – I mean, if you ask – and nothing against a guy like Trevor Ariza, but I'm just – the name came to my head. But if you ask Trevor Ariza that question, Trevor Ariza is going to be like, whoa, why are you asking me that? Like, you know you, you know, Le- you, you yeah, know LeBron's yeah, the better. Yeah. But when you ask a guy like Stephen Curry, and Stephen Curry's like, uh, no, nah, me, player, I'm the better scorer. Like, it, it's – it's 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 almost become taboo, like, to speak bad about LeBron. I mean, look look at what happened to Levitard. He got suspended because he was in a fly of planes over his – Pep rally. I wish that happened. Like, are you serious? I mean, what is ESPN doing? What are they doing? Sus- I, they don't want to hurt LeBron's feelings. That's what it is. There, there. All these people that are talking about LeBron, they don't want to hurt his feelings because now, okay, remember we were talking about before that ESPN's going out of its way to make all these stories. The reason that started to happen was when Fox Sports One came into the picture. Yes. Now ESPN has somebody to fight against or somebody trying right. to take the limelight away from from ESPN. So they don't want to piss LeBron off because then LeBron can kind of decline in interviews with whether ESPN, it be right. Chris Broussard or whoever it may be and say, you know what, I'm going to go and take my interviews to Fox Sports 1. Correct, correct. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah, that, that is a By good point. By Frank, the producer. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a good point. Listen, but still, <laughs> I mean. Le- LeBron s- James is just it's basically a, a monopoly of yeah, the NBA right now. Yeah, yeah. Barack Obama of, of the <laughs> NBA. That, that's who LeBron is. Little Barack so over there. Staying on basketball, we yeah. finally have uh, a Miami Heat player inducted into the Hall of Fame. I think he's the first, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Correct. First, first, he, first Miami Heat player. Alonzo Mourning, and and he's one of my favorite players ever, uh, just because that guy played. I mean, he just played his ass off here in Miami, and he played with all the heart in the world, and he gave us everything he he had. I mean, he gave us every inch that he could possibly give us in every game, and I respected him for that. And he's one of my favorite players to ever play the game. And I'm glad he made it to the Hall of Fame. I really, because he was one of those guys that I thought maybe he could be on the cusp of not getting in because he, you know, when he got sick, his career kind of spiraled a little bit down. But I'm glad the NBA realized the guy when he was healthy played at a very high level and was able to induct him to the Hall of Fame. Well, I mean, I think the fact that he also won with us down here in the finals helped him get into the Hall of Fame because I don't think if he would have had, he wouldn't have had that finals performance that he had. And he wouldn't have won the ring with us to oh, that absolutely. point. He was that not. For, I he, think that fourth quarter performance. Yes, put him in but, the Hall of Fame. Yeah, because I mean, he were, was on that edge, and and you, you need those moments. Yes, to, to signature moments. Because so when you, point. yeah, because when you remember Alonzo Mourning, I mean, what are the moments you remember? That's what I remember when I remember Alonzo Mourning. Yeah. I remember him going crazy and the in series that fourth and quarter like that. where he that, just yeah. was stuffing. Everybody yeah. and their mother, yeah. all right, in that game. He played six so, minutes, about six or seven minutes in that fourth quarter that were absolute mm. game changer. Like, yeah, his energy was crazy. Oh, he must have blocked like four or five shots, shots. in a row, yes. had like three rebounds, had two dunks, and you were like, what, what? got into, into this, this guy? guy. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was possessed. He was like, it I'm was, getting this ring here no matter yeah. what. It's coming down with me. Six or so, eight minutes of just pure Zoe basketball at the, at the highest and yeah, we you, we've always discussed that you get into the Hall of Fame by having an established signature great moments. career and signature moments, right? And that was those. Plus, he had some good moments when when they had their teams with Hardaway and PJ Brown and Jamal Mashburn with their series against the Knicks that were famous series. Even right. though we never really came out on top on those, a couple of them we did, but yeah, we weren't able to play in the finals or anything like that. But Zoe was well deserved. And and I think he he definitely deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Are there any other Heat players out there? You think Timmy gets in? I um, mean, uh, like legit Heat players. I know Gary Payton played with the Heat, and he's gonna be a Hall of Famer. Ray Allen is gonna be a Hall of Famer. Things players I, like that. I, 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 th- that. I think before Tim Hardaway, I think you need to put Glenn Rice in if you're gonna put anybody in the, in, yeah? in the Hall of Fame. Oh, absolutely. 
Glenn Rice is... He was the leading heat scorer until Dwayne Wade knocked him out a couple years ago. Yes. Fair I enough. Mean, Glenn, well, Dwayne Wade's in. That's, G- that's a given. We Glenn that. Rice had at least a season, I think, that he had better stats than Michael Jordan one time. Well, Glenn Rice is... Yeah. I'm not disrespecting For, for that saying. one year and that one time period, if you look it up, he was, if not better than Jordan, just the same as, as far as scoring was. I mean, Glenn Rice, I mean, in those heat teams, that guy was a mission. All right? <laughs> if you remember Glenn Rice... I mean, Robo Rice, when he used to be on, ese tipo era neta. All no, right? He was legit. There's no doubt about it. Glenn Rice is one of the best shooters ever played the game. 18,000 sure. career points, 4,000 career rebounds, 4,000 plus career rebounds, 1,500 three point field goals. How many to, years did he play in the league? Listen to those Almost numbers. Like 15 years. Yeah, and he got a ring with the Lakers. Yes, he did. He got a ring with the Lakers one year um, as, as the fourth option on that team. It, or was it the third option? It was Kobe, Shaq. Who was the other player on that team? They had Kobe, Shaq. He was one of their main options, but they had someone else. It was someone else I'm, that I'm missing right now. Um, I, have, I don't I, remember. I, but I, yeah. I, I know that they had, yeah, they had Kobe, Shaq. Then they had Glenn Rice. They had, um, what was it? They, I don't even remember who they had. But, yeah, they, they, they had someone else there that was. I think that was, I believe that was the second championship they won that he was on. That Correct. Team. He was the third scorer bet- behind Shaq and Kobe. So he was the third option. So he was the okay. third option then. Okay. They might have had another name on the team that we just can't put. Glenn together. Rice deserves to be uh, in the Hall of Fame. And uh, here's another point I want to make. Um, Dude, what is up with the Basketball Hall of Fame? Why doesn't the NBA have a Hall of Fame? What is this basketball thing? The basketball hall of fame that you need to be good in junior high, high school, college. If you played good in Australia and you combine all those things together, why doesn't the NBA have a hall of fame? I mean, what is this? Like whenever I hear about it, I'm like, really? The NBA doesn't have a hall of fame. You have an all united basketball hall of fame. So if I was good in Shenandoah Park and then I went to Rucker and played in Australia, then that makes me a, a basketball Hall of Famer. 15-year career, by the way. 15, right. Yeah, that's what I thought, 15 years. I, I mean, I don't understand this process that the Hall of Fame has with – there's no NBA Hall of Fame. I mean, is that – does that sound ridiculous? No, no, I agree with you 100%. Like, well, if you look at it, out of all the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies, by far it's the one that doesn't even get any coverage. If, if right. I mean, it gets some coverage, but, I mean, the NFL is is – it's amazing. You, you they they do watch it. Yeah, absolutely. The speech, you yes. know, they they set it up for a week, two weeks in advance. They're there. They have a. They, well, they also like, have the Hall of Fame game that f- finishes correct. it. So, so it's a whole weekend perfect. of activities. The baseball Hall of Fame is also, even though I think the NFL tops it, but I think the baseball one is does it, have its its moment of of they do it on a Sunday. I think it's a Sunday afternoon. There's a Sunday night game, so there's a t- the NBA one is like oh yeah, it's a Hall of Fame on Friday night. I'll catch you later. NBA and an NHL both. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like, going on it's like if you did the Hall of Fame uh, ceremony in the middle of Tamiami Park. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, Alonzo Morning is in the Hall of Fame. Here you go, sir. Make a speech. All right, and we're out of here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if well, you you're right, because it, I didn't even know about it until the morning of. Right. It, yeah, they, it's they, almost, they it's almost like it. the Dolphins when they don't want to let you know they have a scrimmage because they suck. The NBA, doesn't want anybody <laughs> to know. the NBA doesn't want anybody to know they're having the Hall of Fame because it's terrible. Like, it, it, think about it. Michael Jordan's. Hall of Fame speech right. and induction should have been something that like everybody stopped to watch. And I don't even remember it happening. I think I saw it. Right, you like, saw I it heard on, about on a it. recap. I was like, oh, I'll catch it later. It wasn't like, well, dude, I, like when Michael yeah. Irvin got inducted to the Football Hall of Fame, I stayed at home to watch that. But I knew he was going in. I knew the hype. Like right. They were hyping it up. Now it's like the NBA was Hall of Fame's Friday right. at 7 well, o'clock. Well, the only thing I remember the Michael Jordan Hall of Fame speech is that uh, Yvette Prieto was on it, which we all know her. We used to party yeah. with Yvette. Yvette made good marrying Michael Jordan. And we saw her there front row clapping, and I thought that was funny. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Junior's hey, ex- we were hanging out with yeah, her. Yeah, Junior's ex-girlfriend there on stage, you know. Did, did. That's hilarious. <laughs> hey, going back to Glenn Rice real quick, is he really deserved to be in the Hall of Fame? Check this out. All right, he was a champion in Michigan. All right, he was a champion in the NBA, but he only was an All Star three times in his 15 year career. Does that give you enough credentials to be in the Hall of Fame? Well, I think you got to look at the numbers for three point shots, uh, number of points he scored, and and put those up against. I mean, he was only two time All listen, NBA. Listen, Glenn Rice played in the golden era of talent in the NBA, which is why he was snubbed three All Star games. He played in the era of the original Dream Team. 
where all those guys made marks in the NBA. Patrick Ewing, Charles Barkley, John Stockton, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, Chris Mullen, Carl Malone. I mean, David Robinson. I mean, the list goes on. It's just crazy how much talent was. We're going through another age like that right now. But that's the age that he was in. So, I mean... You, I don't think yeah, he, he. I don't he played, think he played. He played in an era of the NBA that was a lot of skilled players, and and he was one of those guys. And he also played on the Heat, which at that time was just starting. So he he never got he never got the publicity. Now the, the coverage, the he coverage like on NBC, right? Yeah. And there was no internet back then. And the All Star, the the All Star cast is voted in by um by the fans. So, I mean the the All Star thing to me is you really can't. You really can't put your hands around that. So why haven't the Heat retired his jersey? Um, I don't know. That's they had good, Timmy's. They that, did the Zos. They that, haven't retired his. That's a good question. Uh, maybe he's just not involved with with the Heat the way that those guys are, and they get more they get more press with the Heat and they get more run with them. But I mean, I think I think you got to go with Glenn Rice before you you go with Tim Hardaway. I think Glenn Rice is a, is is a better player than Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway is uh very great to me. Um. I mean, what can you say about Tim Hardaway? He was, he invented a, a, a move that still people talk about today, which was the, the killer, crossover. the killer crossover. Yeah. All right, and that'll resonate in NBA history forever. Um, he played on those run TMC teams with Golden State, which th- those teams were really good teams back then. I, I don't think either one, either one gets in. I I actually thought Tim Hardaway before Rice. On, well, I didn't even think of Glenn Rice. Not that I didn't think about him, but I was like, man, you know, whatever. But when you brought it up. I think they're. I think they're both there. I just don't think they get in. Uh, I, I agree with you. Tim Hardaway was, was more all-around player. Glenn Rice was only a shooter. I mean, because you're talking about uh, Glenn Rice had 18.3 points per game. You're looking at Tim Hardaway with 17.1. But then again, all the Glenn Rice really did other than that was rebound, but it was 4.4 per game when Tim Hardaway had 8.7 assists per game. So but he was if, more of the all-around thing is player. That you you, you could put Glenn Rice also. At, you could put him at power forward too. You know, he he could play power forward if you wanted him to. But if you're also looking yeah. at, at a career as a basketball player, which is what it is now, it's a basketball Hall of Fame. He did have an incredible run at Michigan, and he, and, and and the March and, and he won and titles won, there. Won a title, won. yeah. So if if you start to look at it, where the it whole encompasses picture. not only the NBA but the whole picture, then Glenn Rice does have a notch on Tim Hardaway. If we're gonna look at it as the way they're looking at it, because it's the basketball Hall of Fame, it's not the NBA Hall of Fame. So yeah, that puts you in that position. Where then Glenn Rice does have a notch on Tim, on Hardaway. Tim Hardaway, but I do think that both of them are just on the outside looking in. Uh, let me, and, and I hate to say that, right? But I do think that's that's the case with both of those guys. Right? Who do you think has a, a, more of a legacy with the Heat, Glenn Rice or Tim Hardaway? Wow, that's it, the, you see the thing is that Tim Hardaway played in some big games, and he made some big shots, right? With with the Heat and, and those series with the Pacers and the Knicks and et cetera. And those, and I remember those moments. And Glenn Rice played with the Heat, and they were just beginning. They were just beginning, so Glenn Rice didn't have those signature moments with the Miami Heat. Yeah, Glenn Rice holds a very special place in all the Heat fans' hearts because he was one of the original members of the team. Correct. He played from '89 to like '95. Right. Now Tim Hardaway is more memorable because he played during the whole rivalry with the Knicks, and when the Heat were first and second seed. It was right. always Tim Hardaway, Tim Hardaway, Tim Hardaway. Like if you take a, if, if you take a, a general fan in the let's say you go to the Miami Heat, and you go to the, you go to the American Airlines Arena, and you mm-hmm. poll this is a generic fan, and you t- get ten people, and you ask them, you know, who had a better career, Tim Hardaway or Glenn Rice? The general fan is probably Hardaway. gonna pay say Tim Hardaway, yeah, right? But if you we sit here and we look at the numbers and and have a discussion, you gotta go with G money. You, you gotta go with G money. Because yeah. he was the only guy in the court that did anything at that present time, and he carried the load of that team when they weren't bad. They weren't great Miami Heat teams, but they weren't bad. So we're still talking here, Little Heat Basketball. This is the Owen Frank Noodle Show on SoFloRadio.com. We're going to get into some interesting talk. I want to talk about Kevin Durant and Team USA. And I want to know what was FSU thinking when they allowed questions <laughs> to Jameis Winston. We'll see you guys on the other side. You're listening to SoFloRadio.com. 
This is John Etch in the Sports Heads. All the computer geeks are going crazy because they got the Windows 8 going on. Windows 8 sucks, and if anybody it says is. it's good, <laughs> it's is, is stupid. XP and 7. 7's okay. XP is great. 8 is awful. And there's your tech talk. I almost grabbed my. I almost grabbed the laptop and just slammed it against the ground. Oh, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, actually, it'll probably start working like that. God. <laughs> Tuesday, 7 to 9. Thursday, 8 to 10. John Edge and the Sports Heads. On SoFloRadio.com. The Owen Frank Noodle Show. <laughs> so, how do people actually do it, males, in, in the mean? region? Nah, see, I don't. Dude, I, that's no. if you say you had that much pain on your arm and legs, that's no. that's unacceptable. At that point, something's see, I, going on. I don't, I don't go to that level. I use, I, I trim with a with a little machine, bro. You little buzzer, saying? little buzzer, it buzz down there, a little manscape, <laughs> and we're good to go. Hey, bro, you got a manscape nowadays. No chick wants to go down there and, you know what I'm saying, feel hairs. No, that's terrible. That's and terrible. And either do so you got Yeah, it goes yeah, both ways, it right? It goes both ways, brother. You know what I'm saying? Some chicks go down there, you got hair, and they're like, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Let me come back up. Hold on, cowboy. Yeah, exactly. The Owen Frank Noodle Show, Tuesday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. only on SoFloRadio.com. I am the voice of terrestrial radio. Internet radio will not succeed. You will continue listening to sports, right-wing talk, and mayonnaise FM. If you disobey, we will punish you with more right-wing talk, sports, and mayonnaise FM. We are corporate. Ergo, we are never wrong. Listen and obey. Listen and obey. Shut it down, evil foe, for I am SoFloRadio.com, and I'm here to give back what people want to hear. A variety of entertainment, fresh music, comedy, and different points of view. I own you. Your fart-radiating suit and tie don't frighten me, old chum. Behold the power of SoulFlowRadio.com. My balls are falling off. <laughs> You only had one, my evil friend. There. Now you'll have to squat to pee. SoFloRadio.com. Castrating terrestrial radio. One ball at a time. You are tuned in to the Owen Frank Noodles Show. Guys, we didn't come here for no reason. I say, guys, this is ours, man. On SoFloRadio.com. Those men looked me in my eye and they said, we got this, Jameis. And I said, we said, are you, I said, are you strong? They said, I'm strong if you strong. And I said, we strong, man. Yeah, I'm the only one to get the job done. I don't know a nigga that could cover for me. Yeah, got some game from my day. So she might say she love me. She don't love me like she say she love me. Believe me, believe me. I'm the nigga, boy, they love me in the street. I'm not trying to find nobody else to beat. So if you are an employee of Florida State University Athletics, do you fire your media person? Oh, I mean, what were they thinking? But, but doesn't that have to go through the coaching staff? Like who checks what's going on? Like if I'm if I'm somebody in the FSU athletic department and you tell me, hey, we're gonna have Jameis Winston answer questions on Twitter. I'm like, what are you thinking? Are you serious? Are you, are you serious? This guy has enough problems. Now we want him to answer questions on Twitter. Yeah, that was the, that was the maybe the stupidest move. I mean, that I've seen, and and you don't expect that from from Florida State. I mean, usually that's a very well run program. Absolutely. Or like, you had Bobby Bowden there. Yeah, like they they dot their eyes, now you cross have, their teeth. Right, you yeah, have they, Jimbo they, Fisher. It's it's a well put together program where you don't have those sort of things happening, and that just came out of nowhere i mean where did that come out from i mean well, people that'd be, that that would be that would be the funnier story one of the questions was who gave you better protection last year your offensive line or the tallahassee police department <laughs> Dude, hey they were going off on him they kept on talking about the crabs they're like they really they, they a guy was supposedly at Publix. he took a picture of crabs he's like hey you want me to run out with these right now for you like dude it was crazy i mean listen 
Twitter is not the place where you want to put any athlete, all right? Twitter is a bad place, bro. You find the you find jokes on there, you find mean things. You find I mean it there's raw and uncut. So, I mean, I don't know whose idea that was, but that's that- just a bad bad idea. And the worst part about it is like if you tell me oh my god, if you tell me that Jameis Winston you know, hasn't done the things that he's done, you know, outside right. the like football if, field. If you if you were to put another athlete who's more well put together, but this guy does not have the like, reputation. Since we haven't talked about him. Right. Like Tim Tebow when he played at UF. Exactly. Hey, have a nice chat with Tim Tebow. And that will go well. Oh, yeah, it would go well. Right, because <laughs> Tim Tebow knows how to handle that situation. Yeah, Jameis yeah. Winston can't handle an interview after a game. <laughs> so <laughs> how are you gonna how are you gonna put him on Twitter? No, I the, mean, the wh- funny part is that I actually did the research and he was there, but supposedly they had, I guess, a media relations guy from Florida State next to him there so that he wouldn't go off on a tweet and press send and respond back to one of these guys that were tweeting him with something ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but the tweets he was getting were just classic. They were absolutely classic. But, oh, it's just crazy. So we're, we're, we're trying to kick off a segment here to end the show and 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 – and Frank wanted to have a segment and just where he could, you know, we could all, myself, Frank, and, and Frank Fernandez, our producer here, where we could just speak out and, and say like, something what's that on happened in the week. What's, what's on, on your, your mind? mind? Right. Et cetera. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and ask Frank uh, Noodles here to go ahead and tell us what's what's on your mind. Uh, I mean, I, I mentioned it before, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pounce on it again. I mean, what was ESPN doing? Just suspending Dan for what he did on Friday. I mean, wh- where has freedom of speech gone with with ESPN and what what the people ca- what the people can say? I mean, you're paying these guys for their opinion. I mean, like what happened with Stephen A. two weeks ago. You're paying for his opinion. He gives you his opinion and then you fire him. Levitard, I mean, you hired a clown, so. You're going to get mad at the clown when he acts like a clown? It, it doesn't make sense to me. Why Why would you suspend him? And it's something that was going to be hilarious and funny. I mean, we take sports so serious. Like if it's the the, the, the last thing in the world and, and, and we want to fire this guy and I hate this guy. And it's not. This is We do this for entertainment. You know, we, we watch sports just to be entertained. And, and Levitard was going to entertain Anus and, and make a huge story out, out of it. He's going to have Kimball Slice there, Charles Ramsey. He was going to fly planes. I mean, it was going to be hilarious. He's going to make fun of LeBron, and ESPN comes in and puts the kibosh on it. And I went when I found out about it on Saturday, I went to sleep angry. I couldn't go to sleep. I was waking up at night. I'm like, I cannot believe ESPN suspended Levitard for this. I mean, this doesn't make any sense. Why would they do that? So I, I, I caught beef with it. I was, I, was, I was pissed. I even went on their Facebook page. And I wrote posts over and over, cursing at them. On ESPN? Yeah, on the ESPN Facebook page. Like, I, I didn't agree with it. I I kind of had a feeling what, what happened. I kind of told you, I think probably they probably told him, hey, you can't do that. And right, which we, is what happened. Which is, and we just know how Lebertard is. He's like, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll see you on the flip side. And boom, he did it anyway. No, because he said that he had already talked about it for about four yeah. days. So he would have looked was, stupid. There was nothing wrong with this it. context. No. There was, it wasn't like he put anything disrespectful on the billboard. It was right. funny. It was very witty. It, it, I thought it was great. Um, but, yeah, I'm pretty sure ESPN told him, hey, you know, you can't do that. And, and, and this is what happens. That is what happens when you when you work for that type of organization. Your freedom of speech goes out the door. There's consequences. I'm not, I don't agree with it. But that's what happened. If I was Dan, he has enough power in his own stature that he could do whatever he wants, and he did, and more power to him. But ESPN does some things sometimes that just drive me crazy. Like for instance, I hear Cowherd say, well, they're, some, "They're the big bad wolf, they're, right? They, they got they, you know, they're, they're like the eye in the sky in sports." I basically. hear, I hear Cowherd. Like I heard him say a comment a week ago that I could not believe that he was saying this on the air, and no one talked about it afterwards. He basically came out and said, um, well, yeah, if you do something wrong, it is okay for the government to turn on the mics in your house and the cameras in your computer and look inside your house and listen to what you're doing. And then he's like, go ahead, email me and see if uh, if what I said is wrong. And I'm like, 
wait a minute. Did you just say that on the air right now? I mean, are you guys grasping what I'm saying right now? He's saying it's okay if you have a camera or a mic on your computer and on your television for the government to just turn it on at free will and just with who knows who's behind that camera. I mean, they could abuse it. All right. What if you're having sex with your girlfriend or your wife and someone's turning it on? You have no privacy in your own home. Yeah. Yeah, I that's, mean, that's, that's ridiculous that's, for him to be promoting that on the air. I mean, who runs ESPN? Satan? For them, like, what kind of point of view is that? That's against our Constitution. That's against everything that's American. That's something that Hitler or Fidel would do. How can he just say that just at will and no one talk about it and ESPN just allow for that to happen? I mean, it's, if it's I'm Colin. running a, Right. Yeah. That, yeah it's, if, if it's Colin. It's yeah, ESPN. It's, if I'm running a state... He's the LeBron James of ESPN. Are you serious? <laughs> I, I couldn't believe he said that on the air. That's the most craziest thing I've ever heard. You got a lot of things in your mind. Yes, I do. Well, so. mine is not as important as yours, but I'm right. super excited that we finally got Brady Quinn. Oh, my God. That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about super excited. We should bring Cam Cameron back just so we can have a press conference with Brady Quinn. We should have Cam Cameron introduce Brady Quinn as a Dolphin. But you know who's even more excited that we have Brady Quinn? Oh, my wife. Oh, <laughs> she loves that guy. She loves him just as much as you love David Carr. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Hey, we uh, we need that thumb to go this direction. Dude, let me let me tell you something. <laughs> I I get on my phone little notifications that when the Dolphins or UM or the Heat or all my Florida teams do something, and I got some of the Yankees there, and I got some other teams I'm interested in, and I get, <laughs> look at my phone goes ping. And here it is, Brady Quinn signs the Miami Dolphins, and I was like, what? "Yeah, they, they quoted him. I finally made it. I <laughs> that's finally what he made said. it down he here." <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny. So yeah, that's the, you know, I guess it's one of those things that I was like, "Wow, I finally signed him," and I, my wife, she's probably listening to the show. She probably figured out now that Brady Quinn's with the Dolphins, and I'm probably gonna get a text. She's gonna be like, "We're going to a game this year." I'm gonna be like, "No, you're going to a game because I'm not going." <laughs> but yeah, man, that's. That's Not interesting, but very funny that we finally got Brady Quinn to be a Miami Dolphin. Right. Of course, it's a Dolphin story. These are the kind of stories in, in, in Dolphin land that make it interesting. We finally get a quarterback that we were supposed to draft about five years ago. And just note the fact that, what, Brady Quinn hasn't played football in about two years? Dude, you know, he quit his job. Yeah. He had a job to do college football, I think, on Fox. Right. And he was already set up. They did commercials and everything with him. He was going to be a, a, the next Kirk Herbstreet. And he quit his job. Of course. And the Dolphins, But what is he signing yeah. for? A year? Was he going to make the league minimum? I think they're just bringing him in just what for, are the Dolphins for thinking? depth at quarterback. Are so, they going to get rid of Matt Moore? Like, they dropped Devlin. Well, they dropped Devlin. They, dropped so Devlin. They, brought, they brought him in to see, depending on how severe the Matt Moore injury was. Right. Okay. Well, that tells you how much I watch the Miami Dolphins. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> so, yeah. So, hey, Brady Quinn's on the Miami Dolphins. I'm pretty sure the ladies are excited. Not as much as I am, I guess. And that's what's on my mind. I'm super excited that Brady Quinn is a Miami Dolphin. Listen, I'd rather have Tim Tebow than Brady Quinn. Real? Yes. Absolutely. 110%. There's no way possible... Why would you? Why would you sign this guy? I mean, this is this is such a dolphin sign, dude. They tried out like six guys, like uh, Rex Grossman, yeah, we're gonna Skelton, yeah. John Skelton. Why don't we just sign Jonathan Martin again? I mean, we're gonna go with that. He's you know played pretty solid for San Francisco, actually. Well, we'll see what we'll happens. see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, let, we'll let that one simmer. Yeah. So Frank Fernandez has his show tomorrow. Oh no, tomorrow you. Yeah, I got to reschedule. You got to reschedule, yeah, reschedule, but his show's usually on Wednesdays from six to seven. That's Frank, our producer, by the way. So Frank. Our producer, what's on your mind? I got a, co a quarterback controversy on my mind as well, but it's for the Hurricanes. Bro, a lot of great talk about Brad Kaya, all right? And then you got this guy Heaps also. So Heaps and Kaya right now are the front runners to win the job. Correct. Yo, this guy Kevin Olsen is a joke. What a knucklehead, okay? First of all, he comes in with this huge ego, super arrogant, that he's this next coming because his brother played for the U and his dad was also a professional football player. None of the teammates liked him. And you got this true freshman coming in, Brad Kaya, all the way from California. They pretty much gave him the playbook as he graduated, and he's on it. Like, the kid knows what's up. Bro, Kevin Olsen just failed the drug test. Like, like what are you thinking, bro? Like, get your mind straight, bro. Like, hey. they, like his his future in the Hurricanes is done, in Yeah, my if opinion. I'm the Kings, I just, I, hey, 
Yeah, you part ways with that guy. Yeah, right away. Because he's just going to be a cashier to the team, especially if this kid's performing at, at a decent level. Bro, but this kid, Kaya, bro. Like, if you watch footage on Kaya, the way Kaya's throwing the ball, the way he's handling the 11-11 drills right now in camp, it's amazing. Two things kind of worry me. One, he's a true freshman. So there's a lot of blitz packages that you're going to see in college and in the NFL that you haven't seen in high school oh, because, the, the you know, the game the, gets it gets it yeah, gets quicker the the and it gets more complex. So I'm worried about him putting him in as a true freshman and get hit. all of a sudden these teams just throw the kitchen sink on him and he's just not going to know what to do with the ball. It's it's a big controversy. The, the, the smart football fan in me is saying, you know what, let's redshirt him, let's build him up, and then we'll put him in next year. You know, he can go to – he can go to – to um, a couple of these big environments, like he's going to Nebraska and Louisville this year. Let him take in what college atmosphere, what hostile college atmosphere is, and then you bring him in next year and he should be ready for FSU. This is our future, okay? This is the next Ken Dorsey on this Miami Hurricanes team. I, I'm, I'm so eager to see him play that I want him to play right now, but at the same time, I want him to sit. Now, they're saying Ryan Williams is coming along quicker than what they anticipated originally. In my show a couple weeks ago, I said, you know what? Let's have these two guys, Heaps and Kaya, fight for the quarterback position. Heaps okay. is a senior, right? Heaps is He's a the senior. transfer guy. Right, from Kansas. Correct. Okay. So you put these two kids in, try to fight. You start Heaps game one. You start Heaps game two. If Ryan Williams isn't ready by week three or four, let's see. if he, And if Heaps isn't doing the job, Heaps isn't doing the job, I think it's time to put Kaya in. Especially Kaya doing all the great things that he's, that he's doing in practice well, I right think now. Tomor tomorrow's the scrimmage. And, Which is close and, to the public. And, and it's close to the public, right. and that's where I think they're going to make a decision on who the starter is going to be. They have a point system. I was reading something like that. Um, well, he, tomorrow he's going to narrow it down to those two to guys. To those two guys. Because as of right now, he hasn't ruled out Kevin Olsen just yet. No key. <laughs> but that's just blowing smoke up their ass. You know? you, I, I, I think I agree with you. What, what both Franks were, were kind of – if Kevin Olsen is one of those guys that, that he seems to be a problem for the team and the morale of the team – He's one of those guys. You just gotta bring him into the office and be like, hey, "Look, it's not working out, man. Just, yeah. We'll release your your, your scholarship. Right. If this kid is that good, and 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 we do have Ryan Williams and and the other guys seems to be okay, then then you gotta let him ride." Let me ask you guys a question: What do you guys think of Al Golden coming in right now into his? Uh, I believe it's his fifth year here with the Canes, right? What what's your what's your opinion on him? My opinion on Al Golden, it's 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 very simple. I think he was dealt. You know, some car, uh, uh, let's say like, going to poker, dealt a hand that, that was very difficult to play with, with the whole sanctions and not knowing what was going to happen and all the suspensions and, right. and everything. So, right. So he wrote so, out the sanctions. So correct. he wrote out the sanctions. I think now is when we have to start to judge him as far as a recruiter getting the talent in, which it seems like since the roof has been lifted on the sanctions, he's been able to get better players into the into the college program. I think he's straightened out the team. I think he's established discipline on the team. I think he's he's a good coach. I think he's the right fit for the Canes now. Now is when I have to start really judging him right. as far as where do you take this team three years from now? Right. Are they going to get to the next level? Are they going to be able to compete, maybe get into the playoffs, compete in one of these big bowls? They're not a bad football team. They're missing a couple of players here and there. I think he's had a bad, you know, he's had some bad luck. And the first couple of years, he didn't play with a lot of his players. Now his players are developed. I do think he needs to get rid of one of his coaches. That's one of his boys because that's affecting him. But I don't I don't have a problem with Al Golden. Listen, right. if, you, I, if I, you can win in Temple, I'm sorry. But if you can win in Temple, okay, after that program had so many losing seasons and you can build it to the first bowl game in 40-something years, however he came, you're proving to be a good coach. The thing with D'Onofrio, now that he's starting to get his players in here, the issue with the defense was that the defense is always tired, okay? Because the offense, A, listen, we were going on three bro, and out. Listen, listen, no, hold on. I'm, I'm going to stop you right there. D'Onofrio is a freaking cancer. We're going to see this year how that, much of a cancer no, he is. No, he's terrible. That guy needs to go right now. If, if Listen, if, I'm going to give Golden one more I, year. I, if I, he doesn't fire D'Onofrio this year... Al Golden's got to go. Okay, I agree okay? with you. I have. I don't remember ever a Hurricanes team getting their ass kicked the way we've gotten our ass kicked the last two years. And that game at Louisville was embarrassing because we got our ass kicked by homegrown kids, all right? Those kids before used to come to our program, and they're not coming here because of D'Onofrio, because the scheme here sucks. No, man. Look, yes, it a, is. A lot of the I players... know because I know players, all right, and I know their parents. 
All right, and I'm telling you that they're not coming here because of the scheme the Hurricanes run. But the All same right. thing with the sanctions, okay? All that I'll go there. I'll forget the sanctions. Knows, ben, it has to do with it has to do day. with Donna Shalala that she doesn't want those players in here because she's trying for UM to be the Yale of the South, and she wants a clean program. And that's not going to win football games, all right? We need local talent, which is that's what brought us national championships before, all right? And with the that with D'Onofrio here and Shalala not saying that she doesn't want those players here, we're not going to win nothing, all right? I, that defense that D'Onofrio runs is, it looks like the Tom Alabadotti defense when Marino used to play here, that we couldn't win. We would go 8-8 eight and eight every year because our defense sucked. All right. They used to play a 4-3 defense with a nose tackle playing. All right. Almost safety. What is that, bro? All right. They kick our ass all over the field. We get pushed. All right. Hurricane teams that win make plays on defense. We make no plays on defense. What were we ranked last year? 120th? All right. That was my rant, bro. We, we got to get out of here. <laughs> it's all good, bro. <laughs> and you know what? We're going to end the show just like that. See you guys next week. All right. Peace. Later.
at O and Noodles Show or at Half Moon 20. It's time for the O and Fnoa of the Fast. It's Enos Noon Fast at O.